opening remarks. Nagras, sir, please. Sir, you are muted, sir, please. What is that? Sir, you, uh, you can start this session. This is my humble request to you. Please uh, chair the session and uh, uh, give your opening remarks and start this session, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected head of the department of Mano Darpan Cell, NCRT New Delhi, Professor Anjum Sibia, resource person for today's program. Ms. Sonia Seth, Assistant Commissioner, Academic Indre Vidyale Sangatan. Dr. Shraddha Diwal, Assistant Professor, DPFE NCRT. Shri T. Gopalakrishna, Deputy Commissioner, NVS Hyderabad. And all participants who are the heads of the institutions of schools. I welcome you all for this today's afternoon session. This two days program has been conceptualized by NCRT and RIE Bhopal together to commemorate a special day. And these two days, and today we are in the, the last uh, session where the resource persons are going to speak, all three resource persons are going to speak. I welcome on behalf of, uh, uh, my personal behalf, NCRT and RIA Bhopal. As we all know, this mental health and well-being, the topic itself is very fascinating and attractive mental health and well-being in schools and the role of school administrator. So this is an addition. Generally, we stop up to this much only, mental health and well-being in the school. So when it comes to this mental health, our focus goes towards the counselors or some selected teachers. But now it is broadly thought of the role of school administrator. It is very essential for the administrators to play their role to create a conducive atmosphere for good mental health. The resource persons are going to reveal many facts and figures, many aspects of it. I will not go for it. But one or two points just I want to stress. The role of administrators, especially the heads of the institutions and the people who are in the administrative capacity. Of course, the COVID-19 has taught us many things. But this lesson is a lifetime lesson which we need to continue because this is a need of the hour. Today, the era is digital era. Children and the parents, they are thinking in such a way. So even if I miss the class, so I can cope up by somehow, because I have all YouTube uh, videos and uh, so, so many things. But our ancient teachings in the Gurukula system, it is the bondage between the teacher and the taught, that is the students. When you connect with the lives, so this will make them to be a holistic person rather than mastery in the subject. 
Of course, of course, the mastery in the subject, when the strong mind is developed, so you can master any language, any subject. That is the strength of the mind. Even it is said, you can move the mountains with the strength of your mind. And to create this stable mind and the good health of the mind, so that will bring a complete personality, uh, uh, this, you know, the good personality of a child, and thereby they can become a good citizen of the country. At present, our focus is on the physical health. As you all know, the mental health refers to a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So this is the UNICEF definition, which has already, which you know. I just recollect because when we say mental health, it is not mere one portion. It is the totality, in totality, we have to consider. When you reflect upon the mental health, ultimately to create the environment and everything will come to that point. So it will end up with the practice of values. Because mind is nothing but flow of thoughts. When the quality of mind, quality of mind depends on the quality of thoughts. And these two thoughts are conceived through our sense organs. If the sense organs are left free, just like the horses of the chariot which are left free, to run or to move, then ultimately you will not need the destination. That is what that the famous quote of Swami Vivekananda says, if the sense organs are not disciplined and if the power of discrimination lies dormant, one cannot reach the goal of human life. If you reflect on this sentence, how, how true it is. If you want to reach the human uh, goal of human life, it is very, very essential for all of us to control our sense organs and which is in the control in the sense discipline. So that is how we are able to, uh, you know, keep our the strong mind with good quality of thoughts. So we will listen to all our uh, the resource person then we can summarize in detail and uh, my special request to all the participant is please think on in this direction i am the key person to create a positive mindset and uh, create a beautiful atmosphere for a good mental health and if you are the academic leader so then you can create a, such a beautiful atmosphere so the entire the school atmosphere is so healthy and thereby the society is healthy and the country also can become very very healthy so with this opening remark i request the organizers to continue with the different uh, speakers who are going to reflect upon various topics and that also which is mentioned i think uh, dr saurabh kumar is going to give some details on it thank you thank you very much sir for your opening remarks and uh, as you mentioned that uh, for holistic development of individual it is mandatory to control sense organs and the uh, discipline is very important in our life and the uh, role of, you also highlighted role of school administrator to develop uh, such type of environment in the school. So definitely, again, we will listen you in the end of the session. Once again, thank you very much, sir. Now, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Sona Seth, ma'am, Assistant Commissioner, Academic Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathan. And uh, ma'am uh, will discuss on the topic, role of school administrators, whole school approach for students' well-being, creating awareness on policies and legal provisions, school processes, interpersonal relationships, and infrastructure for promotion and enforcement of mental health and well-being. 
So uh, I invite you, ma'am, uh, for your presentation. Please, ma'am. Ms. Sona Seth, ma'am, Assistant Commissioner, Academic Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathi. Please, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kumar. I would just like to confirm, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you are clearly audible. Uh, thank you. Uh, there seems to be a slight mix up. I am actually a uh, deputy commissioner at Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan, uh, Mumbai region. So I just thought I would correct that. Uh, now, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I would specially like to mention the head of the Manudarpan cell, Dr. Anjum Sibya. Have had some association with her earlier, also worked with her, and uh, thank her for this opportunity to talk about uh, this issue, which is, I believe, uh, of utmost important importance for all of us. Uh, Dr. Honekeri, uh, Director SCRT Goa, uh, all other members from the NCRT, RIA Bhopal, delegates, principals, friends. I would just like to. Uh, since I've been given the task of a slightly drier portion, you know, talking about policies and legal provisions, um, I've tried to do my best. Let's see how well it has been. I will share my screen now. Um, your screen is uh, shared and we are clearly uh, using it. <laughs> it's okay, sir. That's okay. I just wanted to confirm, is the screen uh, visible? Yes, ma'am, it is. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am, it's clear. It's clear? Uh, thank yeah. you. Okay, so uh, this definition has been spoken about and read out, mentioned a number of times yesterday and today. Uh, just now, Dr. Hanekeri referred to it as uh, a, uh, the definition of health, which is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease. It is quite a comprehensive definition, although it is just a single sentence, because it's specifically what happens most of the time is that when we are talking health, we refer to physical health very rarely is mental health thought of also in ordinary conversation. But uh, we have to accept that, yes, it is an indispensable state of well-being in which the individuals can perform their best only if they are mentally healthy. Only then can they work productively and contribute positively. So, um, Although certain things have been spoken about being the last speaker uh, or rather a speaker in the last session, still I would like to mention a few. Now, these are certain statistics. Uh, some of them have been mentioned earlier also today and yesterday, but they are serious enough to warrant a second look. Almost 15% of the total disease conditions in the world are related to mental disease. And we, we have a large population, no doubt, but we are one of the largest populations that suffer from mental diseases. We have the uh, very unfortunate, uh, you could say, uh, achievement. We have the highest number of, or amongst the highest number of suicides in the world. We have an extremely high drug, drug addiction and crime rate, which are no doubt connected as we all know. And the recent pandemic has done nothing to help in these matters. In fact, 20% increase in mental health cases have been observed in India alone. And many of these are because of very uh, you know, causes which are unseen because we have started using these words, anxiety and depression so often that we don't think much of them, but they have serious consequences. Uh, if not corrected earlier, this is what happens that one in six working age adults are estimated to have a mental disorder. If you remember in the morning, one of the speakers mentioned that 10% of all students probably have some mental health issues. But because these mental health issues are not uh, immediately addressed, perhaps they grow and then the percentage gets higher. And the loss it causes, 
Globally, it has been estimated that every year, 12 billion working days are lost only on account of anxiety and depression and what we say stress. It's an alarming state of affairs, which can be perhaps uh, bettered if there is better understanding, awareness, and sensitivity. Another issue uh, which schools are not directly in a way associated with, but are affected by and can also contribute in is the serious shortage of mental health care workers in India. Now, in this scenario, what do the policies and laws talk about in India? Uh, we all would agree that there can be no health without mental health. So going on to the policies. First and foremost, Article 21 of the Indian Constitution talks about the right to life. Now, this right to life includes the right to health. So it is, in a way, our fundamental right when we talk about physical and mental health. In India, we have the National Mental Health Program, which started as early as 82, has been revised, perhaps needs a relook. And then we have the district mental health programs through which the uh, national health program is actually implemented. We have the national mental health policy um, came out in 2014. The Rights of Persons with Disability Act 2016 and the Mental Health Act of, as recent as 2017. Now, talking about the mental health program, the major components are um, in the national health, the treatment of the mentally ill, rehabilitation. One thing which affects us and concerns school practitioners, promotion of positive mental health, an area where we can do uh, uh, quite a lot, preventive measures to reduce mental illness. And uh, the major components of the district mental health program, because uh, basically that is how, where it is implemented. The first you can see is life skills, education and counseling in schools, an important area for us, besides of course, college counseling services, workplace stress management and suicide prevention services. Coming to the, sorry, the National Mental Health Policy, uh, which was unveiled in 2014, the major objectives, um, they are there on the screen, but basically they are talking about mental illness. How can we improve conditions so as to have better mental health, enhance recovery, having easy accessibility and availability uh, to services for mental health. An important aspect, reducing the stigma related to mental health, increasing access, as I said, and also improving infrastructure, generating knowledge, awareness, establishing governance and accountability mechanisms. The Right to Persons with Disability Act, which uh, was revised uh, in 2016, it provides that the appropriate government shall ensure that the Persons with disability enjoy the right to equality, life with dignity, and respect for his or her own integrity equally with others. Now, this act majorly covers seven disabilities, one of which is persons with mental illness. So it is directly related to mental health. And then coming to uh, the main act, which addresses the issue of mental health is the Mental Health Act of 2017. Now, the earlier act was the Mental Health Act of 1987, which had a lot uh, of discrepancies, a lot of deficiencies it was considered. And so this act came up. Um, now, the major objectives of the Mental Health Act are to protect, promote, and fulfill the rights of people with mental illnesses, decriminalizes the attempts to commit suicide because it is accepted that it is actually an illness. It is a problem which needs to be addressed, not in a criminal manner, but in a psychosomatic manner, provides for mental health care and prohibits inhumane forms of treatment, 
empowers people with mental illnesses to decide if they are capable of doing that, the mode and methods of their treatment. It also gives them the rights to medical and social care, just like other people who suffer from any other illnesses. And it gives them the right to work, to live, and receive treatment within the community as far as possible. Now, it is basically the Health Act says that mental health care should be based on internationally accepted ethical standards. As we talk about this, I would like to remind you, just two days back, there was this news item where a father had imprisoned his daughter who was uh, suffering from a mental illness for over 23 years. She was kept tied up in a room with no access to health care, no access to a normal life. Basically, the Mental Health Act tries to ensure that such inhumane treatment is not meted out to people with mental illnesses. They have access to uh, health services and opportunity for recovery. Now, broadly, all these policies Together, we can say they are the national mental health policy of the government of India. And the major objectives of this uh, policies is, are to promote mental health, prevent mental illnesses as far as possible, enable recovery from mental illnesses, especially promote destigmatization and desegregation, basically, uh, stop discrimination against people with mental illnesses, ensure their inclusion in the society and the community, provide them accessible, affordable, quality health and social care. And basically, the fundamental values behind this policy are equity, ensuring everybody has access to the same uh, facilities, justice, integrated care, evidence-based care, good quality health care, and the entire policy talks about a participatory and rights-based approach, good governance so that there is effective delivery, and basically a holistic approach towards mental health. Not only that, it also talks about creating awareness, orienting people, training uh, all stakeholders, so that they are able to help people with mental issues. Now, how does this translate into mental health education in schools? So basic objectives of the mental health education in schools is once again, a refrain you could say to increase awareness. Greater awareness will sensitize people and lead to greater understanding of the concept of self-care and well-being, and also understanding those with health issue, mental health issues. Another objective is to equip students and teachers to recognize mental health issues and symptoms. If they are able to recognize symptoms, they will perhaps be able to help themselves and others. And so basically the policy intends to enable all to be more proactive, to detect problems at an early stage, leading to quicker inter uh, interventions and recovery. It provides exposure to the strategies and tools which can help to cope with mental health challenges. It also specifically talks about providing positive learning environment in schools, development of problem-solving skills of students, normalizing conversations around mental illness and destigmatizing the fear and anxiety which is related to mental health disorders. Basically, as you can see, a whole school approach would be required. All stakeholders will need to be in sync so as to achieve these objectives. Why do we need them? Because we all know that mentally healthy children are definitely more likely to go to school with readiness to learn. They are the ones who will be actively engaging in all school activities. They will be able to develop supportive and caring connections 
with adults and other young people. They will be able to also appropriately use problem solving skills, have non aggressive behaviors, and generally add to the positive school culture. And it, I think, is rightly believed that schools can play a critical role in supporting students with mental health issues provide safe, non-stigmatizing, supportive, natural environment, and also provide access to prevention, early intervention, treatment, and if needed, referral services. Now, this can happen only if we have increased awareness amongst policymakers and planners, because that can lead to improved mental health outcomes. How can the school infrastructure help? Basically, improving the layout and functionality of learning environments can lead to better mental health. And this is where the role of the school administrators comes into the picture. What can they do? They can ensure that the infrastructure is student friendly. For example, movable, uh, comfortable furniture in the classes, multi-purpose rooms, possibility so that there is physical and social activity. The learning spaces should be bright, well-ventilated, well-lighted, spacious, basically happy functional learning spaces. In fact, in KVs, we have the concept, I'm sure in many other schools also, of BALA, that is using the building as a learning aid. Uh, we have uh, numerous instances where uh, schools have come up with different concepts like talking walls, in fact, one of our schools recently in Pune, I saw, had uh, quizzes on walls, daily changing the quizzes and questions. So basically, interesting ways to engage students, make them curious learners, and uh, creatively helping them in their pursuit of mental health also. Schools definitely need to ensure that children, as well as other stakeholders, teachers, other te uh, staff have access to nutritious and tasty food, portable water, basically areas where they can relax and um, in their time off, safe and sanitary environment with access to clean toilets, soap, running water, etc., are the very basic amenities which are needed. Um, now, how can this be done? So they, here is where the role of the uh, school administrators becomes very important. They have to design, first of all, the teaching spaces. So they have to first design appropriate curriculum, varied pedagogy, different kinds of teaching, learning processes, methodologies suited to the different uh, needs of the learners. They have to foster, ensure that there are conditions so as to foster positive teacher-student relationships, uh, interactive and creative classrooms. All these can lead to better mental health. Now, right from early childhood care, uh, you can have uh, mother-child sessions. Uh, if there are any threats to the mother-child bond, you can have experts talking to the parents, helping them because parents also are learning as they're going along. Uh, Basically, uh, besides helping uh, developing child-friendly schools with uh, healthy, safe, enriching physical and social environments, there can be various promotional activities in school. And how can they be implemented? By orienting and sensitizing, training stakeholders so that they can recognize mental health issues. Um, teachers can actually be, it has been spoken about earlier in the day also, how even regular teachers, they are at least uh, supposed to be 10% counselors. That can happen only with good training, with good support from the school system. Uh, in fact, uh, Kendri Vidyalayas have a system where the teachers uh, undergo guidance and counseling training from uh, NCRT and they are able to be there in the school for the students. And every Kendi Vidyalaya also has trained counselors. Then um, the school infrastructure should cater to the developmental needs of the students with different capacities of different levels, uh, with different uh, 
physical and social needs. How can the school infrastructure help? We already talked about it. Other than these, an important aspect is providing access to reliable mental health information so that parents, teachers, students, all do not fall prey to myths, to uh, wrong information. They should have access to, if need be, counseling services, helplines like Manodarpan, uh, dedicated websites so as to access and uh, look at information and also have, um, you could say, contact details of caregivers and psychologists and psychiatrists. Now, I've tried to just present over here in this infographic some uh, things which the school administrator needs to try and ensure that it happens in school, different areas. For example, initially conversations about mental health. As we have been talking since yesterday, one thing which has emerged is that one major reason for mental health or the other mental illnesses in uh, the society, besides many other reasons, is because they go unaddressed right from the beginning, because there is an element of shame, of stigma attached with them. So it is very necessary that there is a collaborative, inclusive and informed approach so that there are conversations around um, mental health. People are able to talk about uh, issues they are facing or symptoms which they are seeing in others. So uh, that early identification, referral and treatment can happen. Now, this can be done through frequent communication programs. The more we talk about it, the less stigma is associated with it. Along with that, also gender sensitization programs, also addressing substance abuse, which uh, is a major cause of mental health uh, or rather mental illness as well. Now, student-focused administration, child-friendly policies can help ensure to promote mental health in the school. So a balanced curricular load, a well-planned timetable, which has spaces for academic activities, also physical activities, art, uh, music, dance, etc., so that uh, the children have space for uh, growth in different areas, and these are generally stress relievers also. In individualized support to the students through observation, identification, and intervention. If a child has mental health issues, ensuring confidentiality so that the child does not hesitate, is able to come forward and seek help. It has to be definitely ensured that any child with any challenges, physical or mental, is not labeled, is not segregated or discriminated against. A lot of work can and has to be done with parents and guardians. Again, first and foremost, creating awareness and sensitizing parents, counseling them. Quite often we have seen that parents are unwilling to accept initially that their child has any mental health issues. It is almost as if they feel blamed. They feel that they have gone wrong somewhere. And that is why the child has developed these issues, which is not necessarily the case. And unless they accept, they, want, they won't seek help. So it is extremely necessary to counsel such parents to, uh, so that they can seek help they need not and should not be ashamed of the child's mental health issues. Also, at times, the school has to seek out, identify and provide support to certain parents who, because of various life challenges, uh, need that support. For example, both parents are working. Quite often in KVs, we see army wives, uh, wives from the services whose uh, husbands are posted far away uh, they live in separated quarters it is, as it is, uh, they are referred to. Sometimes they are not educated or they are barely first generation learners. Uh, they need a lot of support. Then children coming from broken families, uh, 
violent uh, family backgrounds and so on, such people, parents as well, well as students need to be helped and the school can do a lot in that area by first identifying them and then providing them support. Of course, all this is not possible unless we have support for the teachers and the other staff in the school and workplace policies that help them to first of all fight the, their own stress. Uh, now we know, and uh, like I said earlier, one in six adults are facing mental health issues. So definitely some of those adults are in the school system as well. So instead of naming and shaming, what is needed is to provide them support. First, to fight their own issues, to recover, to be contributing positive members in the school. And then of course, to train them so they can assist in handling children with mental health issues. So basically, whenever there is awareness sensitization and training, it first helps the individual and then he or she is able to help in the system. Of course, to reduce stress, uh, some systemic changes uh, need to be implemented as and when possible, wherever in the system, to reduce the workload or help the teachers to manage their workload better. Uh, for example, streamline some repetitive tasks, also promote peer support activities, generally find ways to help the teachers help themselves and so that they can help others. We can involve the community in this. Uh, many of the speakers before me have spoken about how, how especially school practitioners and leaders have spoken how, about how they have involved the parents and the community to help the school, the children and them. So yes, parents, community, alumni, NGOs who are providing such services, experts from various fields, basically all stakeholders can be uh, in different ways they used as resources to create environment where people with mental health problems uh, get support and are able to participate in regular activities without discrimination or segregation. Um, I speak on behalf of KVS. Uh, during the pandemic period, I believe all of us, especially our teachers, uh, had a raw deal. They suddenly had to cope with challenges for which they were not even trained, but they rose to the occasion. They did a good job. Um, Kendri Vidyalayas have provision for trained counselors. Now, they were a good resource for the emotional well-being of students as well as teachers. Um, Teachers uh, during the COVID period were uh, guided and uh, generally as an institutional practice during online classes, uh, most teachers began classes uh, not directly diving into the academic content, but talking to students about their well-being, about their family members. Basically, because it was online teaching, it was an attempt to uh, create rapport, have a connect, and also make them feel cared for. Uh, some activities which were undertaken during uh, COVID, uh, virtual tours to the schools were organized because children were constantly saying that they feel cut off, they miss the school. So they were taken on virtual tour, uh, tours to the classrooms, to the libraries, the laboratories and the play fields. And uh, this was a way of keeping them connected. Of course, every lesson was followed by doable tasks but the effort was to engage children in these activities so that learning happens without discomfort. Another thing when we realized about the disconnect that the children were facing uh, during the lockdown periods, uh, we initiated uh, something like call to friends. And every day the children were encouraged to call at least one another child or student, especially children who were quiet and introverted. So. Uh, Besides this, of course, Manu Darpan proved to be a great uh, resource. It was introduced during COVID. And uh, in fact, it continues uh, even now as a, a helpline, as a means of support to students as well as teachers. Now, what is being done in the system right now also uh, is periodic orientation and sensitization is happening 
at all levels, school teachers, principals, other non-teaching staff. And uh, during these sens uh, sensitization sessions, vital issues related to emotional well-being, how to create a positive school culture, how to recognize problems which the students or other stakeholders, other peers may be facing are talked about. And people are encouraged to be proactive to uh, keeping the confidentiality in uh, place, but help those people who are facing issues. So everybody in the school knows that if X person, a student or teacher is facing mental health issues, so A, you know, person is told is the person to contact and inform so that then they can or their committee can take over and help that individual. Kendi Vidyalayas have been organizing various fun activities, cultural lit literary activities after the schools have reopened because it has been realized though we keep on talking about the learning loss which has been massive but children need other activities because uh, this transition from uh, online to uh, the physical mode of teaching is by itself a stressful transition. Although children are happy being back in school, but so many things they have seen during the uh, COVID period, some oh. have lost family members. So all no. these have been, uh, uh, activities are being done to draw them out and make them comfortable and enjoy school. Also give them opportunity to express themselves. We have, uh, like earlier in the morning, uh, Gyanendra sir from NBS was saying a lot of activities which he mentioned are happening in KVS also, of course. We have suggestion boxes, we have uh, adolescence education program related activities, basically to give children a voice in different ways, provide them the opportunity to speak up, talk about issues which are troubling them so that they can be helped. Uh, children are engaged productively, Efforts are made to recognize and enhance their strengths. Uh, we have the fun days every Saturday for the primary children. Um, bagless days for the six to eight. Uh, it has been decided to have 10 bagless days every year. Give them opportunity to uh, involve uh, in other activities other than academics. Hobby classes are being done. In fact, uh, we have started vocational training through hobby classes. And uh, also regional language teaching is being done through these, uh, using art to de-stress. In fact, in one of the Pune schools, uh, KV number two AFS in Chitrase Chintan Tak, the art teacher has done a great job uh, where children have been given spaces within the Vidyalaya to paint, to color. Many schools are doing it, but it, this was done in the project mode. And basically they were taught how they can use art, music, culture, to de-stress. Children need to learn these activities. They need to learn because uh, there are so many uh, stressors in their world also, like Kashyapi Madam was talking about. So we need to give them these tools to fight with those stresses, to emerge victorious. Even in the academic field, we have learning and ass assessment activities, but basically efforts are made that on the basis of assessment, we have individualized learning plans. Children have different competencies, different uh, learning levels. So once we assess them, we don't label them, but we do ensure that we have individualized learning plans as per their learning levels so that we can make learning meaningful and joyful and as far as possible experiential for them. Uh, the holistic report card was talked about earlier, so I'm not talking about it much here. But yes, it is an effort to have a holistic manner of assessment and uh, learning happening in the class and reporting on it for the parents also to become part of their learning activities. Generally, a whole school approach is being followed and uh, various programs like the Ikbhara Shresht Bharat, Kala Utsav, Green Practices, Awakened Citizen Program, et cetera. All these programs ultimately the target is to provide children an outlet for their creative talents, to help them manage stress, to be and become happy individuals. Uh, we have personal safety and mental health workshops happening in the schools. We have associated with various NGOs, 
who are coming and helping children, you know, helping children to talk. Basically, uh, quite often what happens is that children listen and they learn not to talk. Whereas we are trying to help them speak, speak about things they think about, speak about uh, issues they are facing, maybe in their homes as well as in school, and then find ways to help them help themselves. So we're doing this. Of course, we also have experts coming from various fields. And when these experts talk to the children, children generally you know, get motivated, they learn and they uh, realize that yes, they can, if they are facing mental health issues, emerge. These are just a few things. Of course, schools and school administrators can do so much more. And uh, listening to many of you during the last two days has been a great learning experience for me. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Sibia uh, and all the organizers of this conference for giving me this platform to speak about uh, things which we are doing in KVS and also things which we intend to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, really, ma'am, ma various aspects related to policy and legal provisions of uh, own, uh, and uh, you explained the role of administrator, what should be the role of school administrator in making a school uh, or to follow the school school approach for students. So uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ms. Mona Seth, ma'am, Deputy Commissioner, Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathan, Mumbai region. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sraddha Deval, ma'am. Uh, Madam is Assistant Professor in Department of Educational Psychology uh, in Foundation in Education, NCRT. And uh, ma'am will discuss about promoting career decision making as a choice and not a chance. So ma'am, I invite you, please. Yeah, very good afternoon, Saurabhji. But I would like to know how much time you are giving to me. Uh, ma'am, uh, I think we have 30 minutes more. So 15 minutes. Uh, Ma'am, you can take and uh, uh, 15 minutes, I will request to Sir uh, uh, T. Gopal Krishna, sir, to speak. Please, ma'am, please continue. Okay. Thank you, sir. Respected session chair, uh, Nagaraj Hollekari, uh, sir. Uh, respected Somaskit, ma'am. Respected T. Gopal Krishna, sir. And uh, respected our in charge, Ajmala Paripan, ma'am. Respected all the principals, teachers, and my dear counselors. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, as you know that if, uh, today we are discussing on the role of school administrators, whole school approach for students' well-being and promoting career decision-making as a choice and not as a chance. So we all are aware that uh, career choice is one of the factors which causes anxiety among the students as well as their, in their parents. So when we say that career as a, a choice, so whose choice actually? Is it a student's choice? It is their parents' choice? Is it the school's choice? Or it is peers' choice? The student's friend's choice? But when we say that we are using a whole school approach, in the whole school approach, we take care of the everybody's choice. We take into account everybody's perspective parents, peers, school's perspective, and we need, uh, we uh, make efforts to empower them. In 2015, I uh, did one research study on identifying the career choice pattern of students in Kendri Vidyalaya in Delhi. So what I found was the students in general, the boys and girls together, I found that the first choice is IS officer, IPS officer, or army officer. Their second choice was the dancer, singer, or sports person. And third choice was for the engineering. For the girl students, first choice, second choice, as well as third choice was for dancing, singing, and sports person. And the parent choice was for the first choice was for the doctor. Second choice was for becoming a teacher. And third was for the government officer. And I found that the 89% of students' career choice does not match with their parent choice. So this causes a lot of anxiety and conflict at home. We all are aware about it. 
and when our uh, famous career psychologist donald super says that a person cannot choose a job which he has never heard before so when the child is choosing some career or a job he is seeing in a social media that's why he is choosing that career and when the parent are choosing some particular career for their child so the, based on their own experiences and wish for giving a base to their child they are selecting the that career choice for the students now here i would like to uh, clear one thing that when we are talking about career choice we are just referring to the jobs there is a difference in the career and job these two words are different job means the kind of a work you are doing the nature of duties do you are performing that is called a job and career means the time you are spending on your duties as well as the time you are spending during your leisure become something we of some related uh, education about it where those institutions are when uh, we are planning to become a doctor yeah, the yeah, yeah. is necessary but uh, many a students we come across that they uh, they have decided to become a doctor yeah. but they dislike so this kind of a discussion uh, is are there we need to identify that so career includes career is called a life Career. and it includes necessary readings uh, education as well as personal social qualities yes sir aap bol sir kaun hai sir somebody is the mic is on so sir ji please dekhiye bol dialogue hai so in order to, uh, to uh, empower our children to take the decision uh, right career decision rather inform career decision we have to develop a career readiness among our students so uh, how can we develop that career readiness among the students so uh, one of the report uh, published by fiki in 2013 called vision india 2030 it says that 65% of our students do not have the basic employability skills like reading writing speaking communication taking initiative those skills are missing in our students this is the report by fiki and um, the students which we like in our school are the students who come on the time in the school the, the students who dress properly the students who complete their homework the students who complete their homework, who participate in the team work who take uh, initiative in the learning those who those who do not get bored who who just student hai who as a teacher we like those students and if we say that the uh, the teacher who is punctual the teacher who completes her work on time the teacher who is interested in team work the teacher who has a, a, a quality and ability of adjustment with each other the teacher who gives the opportunity of the accommodation the principal likes that kind of a teacher and the administrative officers like this kind of a principals who have the this ability of taking initiative completing the work on uh, work on time the collecting the resources uh, having team work uh, the uh, interpersonal relationships are good in teacher so these are the qualities are liked by the uh, academicians and uh, officers at the higher level by the principals so Uh, these are the qualities or we call it as a workers attributes or these are the basic employability uh, employability skills now we did not have to uh, name them separately or teach them separately the uh, students are following those skills and attitudes every day but uh, the mistake where we are doing we we uh, the children who are not coming on time we tend to punish them 
the teach the students who are not able to complete their assignment time we tend to punish them rather we need to understand what kind of issues they are going through because of that they are not able to come on time which are the issues because of that they are not able to do the assignment and we uh, the school administrator should facilitate these things and teacher can monitor it saying that these are we are preparing you for your future career these skills are required at every step of life whether it is a school whether it is an institution or whether it is any organization or home also these are these qualities are required for the successful leading successful life itself like for example the students who are very good in taking notes in the classroom so when we uh, um, uh, go to our boss is uh, for example the principal or any commissioner we when the person calls us we have to carry the diary and pen with us so the children who are good in note taking or uh, jotting down the notes when the teacher is teaching in the class that person is habitual in taking those notes that that person without feeling he will carry with him himself diary and pen and these are the um, uh, qualities and the skills required for the uh, workers attributes and we uh, as a school it is we need not have to uh, spend a separate schedule or time for this these are the natural things but only thing is that we have to develop these qualities and these skills through appreciation and motivation another thing is that development of psychological characteristics required for that particular job i said that the career demands career includes three things that is first is occupational another is educational uh, another is educational and third is uh, personal social characteristics or psychological characteristics now every job when we uh, we have decided to become a teacher or we have decided to become a counselor so uh, as soon as we have decided the, to become a teacher the the qualities of teacher are the kindness compassion patience empathy these are the essential qualities required for that if the teacher doesn't have these qualities the teacher gets frustrated when you we have decided to become a counselor then the trustworthiness genuineness uh, sensitivity these are the qualities confidentiality these are the qualities counselor must have if the counselor doesn't have those qualities that person is not suitable for that similarly for the doctor when you decide to become a doctor not only for the money if you have the compassion if you have a kindness and if if you have a notion of helping the community helping the needy people then only the person should become a doctor otherwise a person should not go for the uh, medicine so when we are uh, choosing a career in aviation or defense or army then courage is most essential thing so every career and every job demands different kind of a psychological characteristics and that we are not taking care of and that is why the people tend to leave their job nowadays we see that the people uh, uh, when and uh, two three years after every two three years they are they tend to change the job because they are not seen whether they are able to they are having that psychological characteristics to adjust, adjust in that institution or not so these characteristic psychological characteristic matching to whatever the job we are uh, selecting it is very very essential the third thing is that we need to empower our students in exploration and evaluation of the career information uh, there are lot of uh, information available on the internet we have seen that the uh, many children and parent uh, come across some uh, a site and they take the admission they uh, pay lot uh, lakhs and lakhs of rupees and afterwards they found that it, that institution was fake that uh, job uh, uh, the institution which was providing the job that was fake so we need to empower our children for exploration that how to identify the authentic information related to jobs like ministry of uh, labor and employment it, it is it gives the authentic information the cbsc sites or university sites these give the authentic information so we have to uh, train our children in the exploration as well as evaluation of information when they are coming to some uh, information they must find that who is giving this information why this information is being given 
for whose purpose it is given and how it is given is uh, who are the person who are uh, running this uh, institution so these kind of uh, things the children should explore themselves and when they come across some uh, doubt they they should be able to ask their teacher or counselor in the school so this way we can empower our students for their individual uh, empowerment then another things which are which are common to the all the students like uh, uh, there are various group dissemination methods of career information like the most uh, um, the, most of the people know is that the career talk so we can have the career talk the for career talk if you have a counselor in your schools it is very good that the the, the she or he or she uh, prepares uh, different uh, uh, career talks every month and goes to the different classes and give the information another source of uh, the career talk giving is you can call the employment officer uh, for to your school it is it is in their duty uh, chart to go to the schools and give the career uh, career talk so you can invite them you can send a letter from the school they will come and give the career talk in your class another way of doing is that we have the uh, many parents who are working in different fields so those experienced uh, parents you can call in the school and you can have the career talk so every uh, uh, month or every uh, 15 days you can decide who can come and talk so uh, getting the information from the uh, person who is working uh, that in that field it is very helpful so that the students can ask the information uh, with those people and they can get the first hand information another thing is the preparation of charts you can with the help of with the help of students we can prepare the charts like the career talk uh, gives you a lot of information but once you listen to that the some uh, students will take interest and they will further come uh, to for the doubt level but if you prepare a chart and put it in the corridor the students will watch it uh, every time while going and coming and they will uh, remember what kind of information is given because uh, uh, we during our diploma course in guidance and counseling we organize this career exhibition in every school in, in kendri vidyalaya every year we organize that so i have many uh, seen many students there are some of the students uh, uh, come for two three times for uh, reading out one chart this uh, they say that ki, uh, we have never read this information before so they come two three times and want to understand that information so if you develop these charts and uh, put it in the corridor for one week and after one week you go on changing it will give you uh, uh, stood it will uh, the many of the students will get benefit out of it then you can have the field visits having the first hand ex uh, first hand experience with the industry and the people working in that it is very very helpful as i have seen some of the students they are they have completed the uh, mechanical engineering from iit and they have completed the uh, mba course also and when they go actually in the setting uh, work setting they do not want to work with the uniform they do not want to work with the oils so uh, and they come back they want the job with uh, they, they will sit only on the chair and uh, to do the paper work so first hand experience for the students it is very very essential so these kind of a, uh, group methods are very essential like uh, uh, the entire class requires the dissemination of information about what are the major sources of recruiters the major recruiters in our countries mein hai the defense army uh, railways aviation banking sector staff selection commission upsc these are the major recruiters so uh, if, uh, if you have a counselor counselor can give this information but every teacher must have the information about what are the careers available in her subject nowadays the the collection of information has become very easy so every teacher must equip herself at least in her subject what are the career options available for the students and she she or he should be able to guide the children or how to uh, collect the information and how to use the authentic information for their welfare 
then the next thing i would like to say is that we need to involve the parents in the learning of the child whatever the behavior the child is showing in the classroom the parents are equal partner in that whether it is learning or career decision making at least once a month we should have a discussion with the parents then the next is uh, we can have the skill development program uh, in uh, 2000 uh, till 2015 we expected that the 25% of our students will go to a vocational education but it, it did not happen only 5% students go into vocational education because the kind of a language we are using we say that the children who are not good in academics can go to vocational education or can go to skill development courses every uh, it is not necessary if the child is academically good also he need some skills and if he is interested in carpentry or uh, uh, electronics or any other skill he must be allowed rather encouraged for doing that and uh, the the vocabulary we are using that the children who are not good in academics should go to vocational education should be changed at all levels because learning skill is not below any academics it is equivalent to the academics so we must encourage and facilitate children for developing this skill development programs we have that uh, um, ministry of medium uh, small and major uh, msme ministry uh, ministry we can take the help from them if we have a 50 to 60 students who want to learn some particular skill and if we want if we write a letter to them they come and teach even in the rural villages also they come and uh, teach and give this skill uh, skill development training we can as a uh, school level or at the uh, sangathan level we can have this uh, collaboration with the industry ministry of labor and employment uh, msme nsdc we can have the collaboration so that during the vacation students can work to uh, the permissible uh, vocation students can work on that because uh, one of my studies the students said that because of uh, my financial condition of at home i may not be able to study after 10 standard so uh, after 10 standard the the industries which are Uh, giving the permissible jobs to the students we should encourage students to work during the vacation this will uh, uh, develop their confidence this will help them to develop their skill as well as it will make them uh, confident and competent to have their own education they will not depend on their parents or guardians for their education uh, now uh, i am given only 15 minutes so uh, in the end i would like to say is that uh, there is one uh, career psychologist greenhouse he says that ki, there is a uh, destiny drama and deliberation so uh, destiny he means by in the, in the destiny he says we have decided to become something so we we are planning that we have done aptitude test we have done interest test we have seen personality also we have identified the environment and institution and we are full prepared that means we have chosen our destination for our career but there is a drama drama means what in a life there are a lot of uncertainty like three ways of uncertainty we have in our life that is it can be in a, a financial crisis it can be our interpersonal relationship or it can be our health so these things if because of that we say many a times we have to change our decisions related to career then third thing he says about deliberations deliberation he means deliberation means reflection so one point of time we have to reflect on our own career choice yes i have got this job i am i am getting this amount of money but am i happy what do you want for my happiness this money is not giving me happiness this uh, status is not giving me happiness so what is that one thing which gives me happiness so find uh, we must find out that purpose in our life the purpose life purpose of life uh, is in helping someone in in generosity in gi giving something it is not necessarily in terms of money but our time energy money if we can give our time to someone it gives us a purpose of life 
so some time or some uh, time in our life we must reflect on what I mean, uh, what for i am doing this i have planned this so much i have done this but what i want to do in future that kind of a reflection is necessary and that kind of a um, resilience and bouncing back gives a lot of strength to us so uh, i would request uh, our all students and teachers to uh, find out what purpose what is the purpose for that we are working for thank you thank you onikari sir i have finished my talking saurabh ji are you there thank you very much ma'am i think there is maybe some technical glitch or something like that this is gopal krishna uh, yes namaskar sir go, go ahead yes uh, yes sir i think we should think that there is some challenge am i audible to you ma'am yes sir most respectable uh, dignitaries present in the conference national conference on mental health and well being in schools it is the most important topic of the present context uh, the topic given to me is school administrators as catalysts for prevention and promotion of mental health and well being the larger context of the theme the role of school administrators as agents of change in promoting mental health and well being in schools now the topic is how the administrators or catalysts both for prevention and promotion of mental health and well being i think is one of the most key factors that all of us should be concerned with uh, i think in, in fact i have prepared an elaborate presentation uh, giving a overview of the mental health and well being in the school context and what challenges the children are pitched against in the present context how do they appear in the form of their behavioral outcomes and uh, uh, how they have to be supported in order to uh, mitigate those challenges but keeping in view of the paucity of time i am not going to go through the entire presentation rather i would like to concentrate more on the role of uh, school administrators as catalyst for prevention and promotion of mental health and well being um as we are progressing towards the school administrators as the pedagogical leaders which is is a paradigm shift from the principal or the head of the institution being just an administrator now we are strongly thinking in terms of the principal to play the role of pedagogical leader i think the same thing holds good with uh, the administrator the head of the institution has to be a coach a trainer a facilitator a motivator and a source of inspiration for the remaining staff members to provide that kind of ecosystem which is required to help the children who are in a very very challenging Uh, context now to begin with uh, normally in the uh, in the school scenario the administrators the school heads uh, we tend to have an opinion or a perspective that by virtue of our experience i have all the solutions uh, for the problems that the children have and thereby we sometimes ask a few questions in the open and we know now that this is not the strategy which will work out in the present context it is only by empowering the children to address their own issues we will be able to help them otherwise we are going to be an additional part of the problem that the child is already facing so this is the first point i would like to 
place it before all the school administrators that being the catalyst and the change maker, the school administrator has to create an ecosystem where the teachers and the other stakeholders are empowered to in turn empower the children to resolve their challenges. And normally, school heads, we have the tendency to depend more on something like giving circulars or notifications or memos, or sometimes even we take coercive and administrative actions. And I think in the context of building mental health and well-being of the students, I think the, uh, the standpoint should be entirely different. The head, uh, the head of the school has to play the role of a counselor or a human coach to bring that kind of awareness among the uh, teachers with which they will be able to in turn support the student. And this is the first and foremost point that I wanted to highlight. And as we all know, that the resolving of the conflict, resolution of the challenge, supporting the student, it is always through the teacher. It is not through an order, not through a circular, things can be made possible. It is only through empowering the teacher. It is only through orienting the teacher. It is only to, through training the teacher and also build that confidence in the teacher, the, the purpose for which this um, assignment is being given to him can be realized. So if at all, if any deficiencies are observed among the stakeholders who are supposed to support the, who are supposed to support uh, the children, such deficiencies in the form of one-to-one -one counseling or some orientation programs or through training, well-designed, uh, customized training to the teachers. Now, uh, we are very lucky that especially in organizations like Navodaya and KVS, a lot of teachers have been already trained uh, through the uh, guidance and counseling uh, course provided by NCR. So by taking such teachers who have been very proactive in their approach to address the challenges of the teacher students, we can build a team of master trainers at national level, at regional level, at cluster level. In turn, they will support the remaining uh, teachers. And I think this approach will definitely um, work for uh, providing the safety net, which is very much required for the children, especially in the present context. And one of the most challenging situations that we are observing among the children is the huge learning gap that has happened during this uh, one and a half years or even more uh, lockdown periods. Whatever we have talked in terms of uh, online support and you know, all those things, uh, we know now when the children have come back to the schools in the physical mode, when we look at their faces, we are able to see the huge gap that has, uh, that has been created in their minds especially in the form of learning gaps. So now is the time. I think this is a major component which is causing a lot of stress to the uh, uh, students. In the context of, uh, in the context of uh, um, teaching learning activities, the students are not able to, majority of them are not able to follow what is going on in the higher classes than they found themselves two years back. So what are the tools uh, we are able to use to assess the learning gap. And I think this is a major component. And I think school administrators, if they can collaborate, if they can work together, if they can take support of the teachers, I think they can devise a variety of tools uh, among which I think the observation in the classroom context, in the natural setup where the children are in the playground or the musical activities or drawing activities, whatsoever it may be, I think that the teacher will be able to identify what exactly the child is facing. And I think from this perspective, if the school administrators can address the issue, I'm sure there is going to be a, 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 a huge support system for the uh, students. Now, uh, normally in the age old phenomena, uh, the parental support, what we used to say, it is only when there is a problem, uh, we call the parent to the school, or we inform what the child has not done. I think now there, the, with the appropriate intervention, with the appropriate perspective of the school administrator, now the entire scenario can be changed by 
taking the support of the parents, uh, maybe especially in our Navodaya context and then the KB context, we have something called Shala Darpan, you know, where it, it should not be, uh, not merely to be used only for the attendance purpose. If we can each and every small little bit of thing that the child has performed, if that can be posted, and if that message goes to the child through the parent, that will make a paradigm uh, change in the overall well-being of the uh, students. So now, including attendance, if we can make use of all those parameters which are available on the Shara Darpan and use that as a potential digital medium to communicate to the parent about the progress of the child, about the advancement of the child, and about the behavior of the child in, in, in uh, you know, in non-judgmental manner. And I think it is going to bring a great synergy together. Parents, teachers empowered, parents empowered to understand the child, and the administrator is very proactive, and he is able to uh, reach out to anybody who is in need to build their competencies. And I think that is what is the need of the work. And I am sure with this kind of approach, if the school administrators can make a new beginning, and I think all the challenges which have been imposed on the children due to um, certain conditions which were beyond our control, I think in a very short time, again, we'll be able to regenerate the entire situation and be part of child support system rather than uh, you know, being judgmental about the uh, children's performance in the schools. And I think this is the major perspective I just wanted to share with you. And for all other remaining details, my presentation is already shared with uh, uh, Madam uh, Sushmita Ma'am. Uh, you can definitely take it from her. And I'm very grateful to all of you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Anandar. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> Hope I was audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir, you were clear, audible. So I think there's our team members may be disconnected so much. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. If anybody wants to supplement, four zero. Speakers who shared their views in this session. Uh, Mr. First of all, I express my sincere gratitude to chair of this session, Sri Nagaraj Hunekari sir, director SCRT Goa, sir chaired this session and provided us various uh, experiences related to uh, school administration. We are also thankful. Uh, to Ms. Sona Seth, ma'am, Deputy Commissioner, Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathan, Mumbai region, and ma'am discussed uh, various policies and legal provisions for mental health and well being in schools. Uh, we are also thankful to Dr. Sardha Dival, ma'am. Madam uh, beautifully explained about various aspects how a teacher and a school ad administrator can support the students uh, so that the students can make career choices. Thank you, ma'am. And we are uh, thankful uh, to Sri T. Gopal Krishna, sir, Deputy Commissioner, Navodha Vidyalaya Samiti, Hyderabad. Sir, provided us various inputs related to uh, uh, prevention and promotion of mental health and well-being in the schools and what should be the role of the school administrator as a catalyst. So once again, thank you to all of you. Thank you. Now, uh, um, we move to our next session. And uh, for... Uh, Coordinating next session, I would like to invite Ms. Chandana Mandal, ma'am, Joint Commissioner, Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathan, Aru Kolkata. Ma'am, please. Chandana Mandal, ma'am, are you there? Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. Am I audible? My video, I think I'm having an issue. My video is some issue, um, so I'm not able, sorry about that, I'm not able to put on my video. Uh, good afternoon to
Uh, this uh, session basically focus on towards holistic development, fulfilling the goal of NEP 2020 for mental health and well-being. Yes. 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 Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are clearly audible. Please continue. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, the holistic development and the well-being of the child, they are all intertwined, interrelated issue because uh, the, as I was saying, the earlier, whenever we talked about health and well-being, the focus was on the physical health. Uh, but uh, lately, there have been um, renewed emphasis on the mental well-being also, that health also includes mental health and not only physical health. And it is, um, we as educationists, especially, the principals, the heads of these schools have to be very, very alert to this issue. And this issue has become uh, very uh, apparent and it has come into focus more so uh, with the COVID scenario. Uh, so uh, the what a school head can do, uh, a lot of things actually. So there was a previous session entirely on this that what school administration or school head can do. Uh, so, to Uh, I think uh, there is some technical problem on the end of uh, Sanjana Mandal ma'am. So uh, I welcome all the panelists to this session and ma'am, when uh, ma'am will join, we will continue. Uh, I invite uh, and welcome Professor Swati Kapra ma'am, Department of Psychology, SOS Institute, New Delhi. Ma'am, I invite you to come on the presentation. Professor Swati Patra, ma'am. And again, I am requesting you all the participants to kindly be muted. Swati, ma'am, are you there? Yes, I am here. Good afternoon to everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Uh, should I start or what is the... Uh... Ma'am, you please start. Actually, there, uh, there is some uh, tactical uh, uh, issue and uh, Chandana Mandal ma'am is trying to join. So when she will join, she will again start. But uh, uh, without us, we have six presenters in this session. So please, ma'am, you continue. Please. Okay, so how much time do I have? Ma'am, uh, 15 minutes, uh, I think uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes each speaker can take. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. And um, as uh, the topic for this uh, particular panel is that uh, the role of administrators in uh, the promotion of uh, mental health and well-being among the school children, 
and uh, uh, there are some disturbances coming is it okay am i audible yes ma'am you are audible okay ma'am audible fine fine so uh, as i was telling that uh, the mental health is definitely a, a very important uh, topic and that has come up in a very big way recently in the uh, uh, schools uh, school setup okay and the national education policy that is there 2020 it has amply focused on the issue of uh, school mental health okay uh, when i say school mental health it is mental health overall i am talking about it is not only the students but the entire school a whole school approach that i'll be emphasizing here when we talk about mental health because in the uh, school ecosystem we have the students we have the teachers we have the different staffs the administrators the school leader okay so the entire uh, setup that entire ecosystem we need to keep in mind when we are talking about the mental health and well-being in the context of school system now uh, national education policy 2020 it has uh, brought about major changes in the way education is uh, visualized or conceptualized and how it is implemented in our country so So, education is very significant in the sense that it lays the foundation for preparing the future generation of our country okay. the students are our future assets so we can say schools uh, function as uh, labs for uh, where we uh, test where we experiment where we uh, develop new ideas creativities insights and implement these to save this future generation of our country because they are the important human resource for any a uh, particular nation so we need to prepare them so that they can excel in various fields and um, they can take our country to newer and greater heights and bring about all round development of the country so when we are focusing on the all round development of each child each student then definitely that will lead to all round development of the country and for this we need to focus on the all round or holistic development of the young generation who are the crucial resources for any nation now here i have uh, said that when you are talking about the school education we need to focus on three aspects different aspects the first is the what what refers to the uh, the content or the school curriculum that we have the how that refers to the process of schooling the uh, it involves different aspects of schooling like we have uh, teaching learning methods that are used the assessment or the evaluation pro procedure and also uh, developing different skills and values uh, among the students so this covers the how of uh, school education when we talk about the third aspect is the where where refers to the general socio emotional uh, cultural environment of the school okay and this where the socio emotional uh, environment that serves as the background in which the other two things that is the what and how they occur when so when we are talking about the content the curriculum that are taught when we are talking about the uh, the process of schooling how the teaching learning methods happen the assessment procedure happens how uh, focus is there on developing or uh, development of different skills among the students so these things can happen only when uh, we take into account the where of this entire scenario what is that socio emotional cultural environment in the school that is prevalent that so that will help the development of this what and how in the school so in all this definitely we need to focus on the um, quality aspect of course okay because um, but quantity also needs to be focused on so i always say that the quality is there definitely we need to look into the quality aspect but quantity is also important because if quality is not there the desired outcomes will not get goals may not be achieved but we do need quantity also so that there can be all round holistic development for all so when i say quantity it includes the uh, when we, uh, we talk about in terms of the ger increasing the ger or we talk about the right to education for all so it covers the quantity actually okay that we need to reach out to each and every child so that they get good education quality education because uh, if you see india has a very uh, large um, young population nearly Uh, i think 40% of the indian population is uh, between the age of 13 to 35 years okay 
and India is uh, home to a fifth of the world's youth population. So it's a very huge asset, a demographic dividend that we have. So, uh, so my focus in this, uh, the three aspects that I told about is the on this where of school education, where all the transactions that take place in the school. And as uh, NEP says, the purpose of education system is to develop good human beings. Now, what is good human beings when we say good human beings? That is, they're capable of uh, rational thoughts. They're capable of uh, rational action. Scientific temper should be there. And they should be um, possessing uh, empathy, compassion, uh, resilience, courage, creative imagination, and uh, sound ethical uh, uh, values. Okay. So the focus needs to be not only on the, uh, the cognitive development, the intellectual development, but also on the other side, the effective aspect also. So there needs to be a combination of the head as well as the heart. Okay. And this uh, combination needs to be based on a plane of consciousness where the child is governed by uh, his or her conscience, the ethical principles and values. So that is why the Indian knowledge system that we uh, uh, emphasize that also comes into the picture here that when we are talking about the combining the head and the heart, heart so this combination of head and heart should uh, occur on a plane of uh, this Indian knowledge system that also needs to be brought into the uh, picture here. Okay. So, uh, and this is very, very important because we find so many instances of um, like uh, road rage or abuse or uh, juvenile crimes, uh, even killings, uh, suicide and depression cases also among the uh, young generation. And because there is a lack of patience, uh, lack of uh, uh, frustration tolerance, and there is this mad race of uh, getting ahead of others. So where are we exactly heading? Where are our uh, young generation that moving? So we are major, uh, mainly we are focused on pursuing individualistic goals or there needs to be a collectivistic approach also. So we grow as a society, as a nation, and uh, make this world a better place. Uh, because if you see uh, human beings, the brain, it's a, a marvel, it's a wonder. It can create so many things. So, but then why don't we use this wonderful brain that we have for our own benefit as a community, as nations, for enhancing our mental health, for flourishing? Each child can flourish. So when we are using our head, our intellectual capacity for creating so many things, that same intellectual capacity, when it is combined with the effective aspect, the heart uh, aspect, then it can do wonders. So it can uh, help us in enhancing our mental health and well-being also. So we need to take uh, all together if we have to uh, make real and sustainable progress. So together, when I'm saying it is that the students are there, the school staff is there, the administrators, because they are at the leadership position in the school. They need to look into uh, all these aspects because when it comes from the top and they have a clear vision about what exactly is mental and how to, uh, what is the importance of it, how to, uh, and how can we implement it at the school level, then things start happening. So for that, we need to take all together and then only we can have a real sustainable progress because sustainable well-being, when we are talking about mental health and well-being, we also need to focus on the sustainability part. Okay, so it is not that we did something and then, uh, then it is over. It has to be sustainable in the long run so that real uh, mental health can be ensured, real development can happen among the young generation. So that is why the focus needs to be on the socio-emotional uh, environment that is prevalent in the school uh, setup because that is the environment where every other thing happens. So unless that culture is that that socio-emotional the effective aspect is taken care of, the other things may not be that effective. So uh, this uh, uh, socio-emotional environment that needs to be strengthened. That is why we say that positive schooling is very important. And as I said, at the same time, connection uh, to one's roots and culture, the Indian cultural tradition, the Indian knowledge system that is very rich in uh, taking care of the uh, mental health aspects, that also needs to be uh, taken into consideration. 
and uh, already i think uh, in various schools uh, this aspect is being focused on like for example the delhi government it is uh, the happiness curriculum is there in uh, different schools that is being implemented so that definitely contributes a lot towards uh, uh, enhancing the mental health well-being of the uh, students uh, similarly in uh, like uh, us setup also there is uh, this uh, collaborative uh, of academic social and emotional learning they also uh, do a lot of things and they have uh, for each uh, level of uh, each stage of education they have different uh, specific activities uh, uh, which help in enhancing the socio emotional atmosphere of the school the socio emotional uh, it encourages the socio emotional learning of the students so that definitely contributes a lot to the enhancement of mental health and well being of the students so uh, if i say here that nep uh, 2020 uh, if we look into this uh, we can see here that uh, uh, it has highlighted various uh, fundamental principles okay now what are those fundamental principles one is that it says that unique capabilities both academic and non academic so that means we need to focus on uh, uh, what are the capabilities the student each child is having it might be it may be academic it may be non academic also so uh, the usual emphasis is on the academic in the schools largely okay that aspect is there but then when you are talking about the holistic development we also do need to take into account the non academic part also uh, there is a, this uh, thing that uh, suppose a child is not uh, paying attention to the studies so usually what we say the child is not uh, good in studies or the child doesn't take interest in studies but then the child may be very good in uh, playing football so we uh, need to uh, find out we need to focus on where does the child's motivation lie because many times uh, in academic or any other thing the motivation plays a very crucial role the social emotional learning aspect that i'm talking about motivation is also a very important factor there so if a child is not studying properly is not putting in that much effort that uh, he or she is capable of uh, putting in so then we need to look into this thing that and reflect on that where uh, does the child's motivation lie maybe the child is motivated to do something else for example maybe let's say playing football or drawing or painting so we need to equally focus on the other aspect also and then uh, both the academic and non academic aspect can be taken care of because unless we recognize the child unless we take the strengths that the child is already having then the child will not feel integrated the child will not uh, uh, develop in a holistic manner so that is why the nep it also highlights that we need to focus on the unique capabilities both academic and non academic that the, uh, each child is having okay so that is why it talks about uh, taking into account the interest of this uh, child also and also there should be flexibility flexible approach and it also talks about ethics and human values and life skills okay so definitely these like as i was uh, telling that uh, uh, there are various instances that are coming into the picture now that ch children are suffering from depression or uh, uh, they are uh, they are having lack of tolerance so they are uh, like they engage in very aggressive acts or they get uh, in angry or aggressive acts or violence is that so definitely there is uh, the lack of human uh, values so we need to focus on uh, how to inculcate these human values among the uh, young generation okay and it also talks about emphasizing on the life skills okay and uh, creating a positive working environment not only for the uh, teachers but also in general we can say uh, the entire school staff okay because this positive working environment that we talk about it has to be that again it will uh, definitely take into account the socio emotional cultural atmosphere of the particular school like for example we are working in different organizations so in the work setup also we talk about what is the work uh, the culture of that particular organization how it is like to work there so similarly when the students come to the school to learn to spend so much of that time uh, in the school setup the socio emotional cultural atmosphere the climate school climate 
of the particular school also matters a lot in um, in influencing the uh, student's uh, well-being. So that is why you also need to look into this aspect that there should be a positive environment. School environment should be very positive, which is conducive to uh, enhance the mental health and well-being of students as well as the entire staff. Similarly, it also talks about taking pride in uh, Indian cultural traditions. That that it says that there should be a feeling of rootedness. Okay. So. Uh, and also it talks about access to uh, quality education is a basic right. So NEP uh, 2020 also highlights that uh, it should be as a basic right, we should consider this. Okay. Because uh, when we are talking about uh, education, okay, it is not that uh, the uh, students are coming and getting educated and they're going out. Okay, Like they learned, they completed their education, then they uh, enter into the job market, they do work and all these things. But in this entire process, our objective is that to develop the individual child as a, uh, as a holistic human being with all the good qualities, with all the uh, value system. Because that is what, what is important ultimately for the well-being of the child and then that will also contribute to the uh, well-being of the nation. Okay. So, in this also, they have highlighted the respect for diversity okay. and the uh, full uh, uh, inclusion and in sense of equity and inclusion. Okay. So it is not that only uh, uh, one group of students, but then we have uh, varied background children. So the needs and the concerns and issues of these uh, varied groups of children also needs to be taken into account. Like we have children with disability or children from uh, underprivileged children or different backgrounds. Okay, so that also, when we are talking about creating a social uh, emotional learning environment, we need to also focus in this uh, that how all the sections of the students they uh, should feel included in the uh, particular school setup. And as uh, I uh, said, that uh, it also says that uh, instilling a sense of deep rooted pride in being Indian plus being a truly global citizen. Okay, because being an Indian citizen, that is there. Okay, but along with that, the students also should uh, develop this idea that they are a truly global citizen, having uh, all the uh, sense of responsibility and uh, uh, doing something and thinking in terms of the entire um, universe or the entire world, we can say. Because when we are talking about sustainability, sustainable development, and sustainable mental health and well being, it is not that we uh, uh, we'll be thinking in a uh, limited sense, but we have to think in terms of a broader sense, okay? because it is ultimately uh, the sense of uh, the community sense that needs to be prevalent. Okay? It is, uh, we can say that no man is in, like island. We cannot think in terms of uh, islands. Okay? It has to be together. How mental health and well-being of uh, each and every child and then the community, and then that will, uh, uh, move further to the nation and the, the country and the continent and the entire universe. So uh, the action points, if I uh, talk about the, the NEP has highlighted these things now. Okay. Now, if I talk about keeping in mind these uh, points, which NEP has talked about, what are the action points that we need to, uh, I mean, we can think of for ensuring the mental health and well-being of uh, students. So one is that there are two things I would highlight here. One is that uh, preparing the socio-emotional learning framework, uh, focusing on the school climate that will ensure adequate and appropriate social emotional environment in the school. Okay. And the second is we can emphasize on uh, inculcating character strengths and uh, virtues and ethical values in the uh, backdrop of this conducive uh, socio-emotional environment. So basically, there are two things here when we talk in terms of the action points. One is that the school climate we need to focus on. So as uh, the school administ uh, administrators, as the school leaders, uh, we need to focus on how we are preparing the school climate. What is the school climate? What is the uh, social, emotional, cultural environment of the school? Because that will serve as the backdrop for the other things. 
So the second action point here, uh, which I emphasized, is the uh, focusing on the development of character strengths and virtues. So that will happen only when we have the uh, proper conducive school environment or school climate. So, uh, Doctor Patra, uh, yeah. can I can, can I interrupt? Uh, uh, can you conclude in uh, yes, next? Yes, few minutes? yes, yeah, yeah. I'm going Thank to conclude. You. I'm going to. Conclude. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's all right. So, uh, as I was saying, that these two uh, NEP, uh, the what are the focus of NEP that I've highlighted pertaining to the mental health, and then I talked about that. Uh, what are the action points we can take? Basically, two action points I highlighted. One is the uh, uh, school climate that we can focus on, a conducive school climate, focusing on the socio-emotional learning, socio-emotional cultural environment of the school, and the second is development of character strengths and values and virtues. So investment in mental health needs to be there. And uh, as part of this, the crucial thing is to increase the mental health awareness and importance related to mental health at all levels of the school, especially the leadership. Then only it will lead to action. So I concluded here focusing on this, that mental health awareness needs to be there and that will lead to action at the school level. Okay, so thank you all. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Patra. I'm really sorry that I had to uh, come here with me. Okay. But uh, your session was really comprehensive, and I think it uh, included the entire topic. The topic should be very clear to the participants. And uh, like uh, linking the NEP, what NEP says about holistic development and how it is linked with mental health. So, and action points also, ma'am, you have. Uh, so uh, that is what uh, I would also emphasize that mental health should not be seen in isolation. Otherwise, it is understood as some ailment. So it is not like that. There are uh, the entire school, like uh, Dr. Patra has just said, it has to be whole school approach. And we need to um, uh, foster the belonging and connection uh, with the school of the children. We need to identify the stressors. Uh, that cause stress among children. We all know uh, the, uh, which are those like exam is one big that causes stress, peer pressure causes stress and um, bullying uh, uh, causes uh, stress and all, of course the adolescent issues among the adults and that they are these are the stress factors and they lead to uh, the uh, situation uh, that may uh, if not addressed uh, at the early stage may, may lead to uh, something. Uh, serious. Uh, so um, uh, I would, in fact, uh, invite the other uh, panelists. Uh, who is the next panelist, Dr. Saurabh? Uh, please uh, call the next one. Uh, next, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Elizabeth Ma'am from RI Bhubaneswar. Please, ma'am. Dr. Elizabeth, ma'am, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Dr. Okay, Saurabh, I'm here. Okay, ma'am, please continue. Okay. Uh, I have uh, PPT. Uh, can it be shared from there? Yes, ma'am, uh, we are sharing. Okay. CIPT, please share PPT. Okay. Uh, esteemed chairperson of this session, uh, my co-panelist, all the principal and head of schools of different region, of different state, and their participant. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk about uh, this particular uh, theme that is on towards holistic development, fulfilling the goals of NEP 2020 for mental health and well-being. Uh, well, uh, the previous speaker has already comprehensively touched upon many of the important points what NEP uh, 2020 talks about. So I'll be uh, touching upon uh, uh, the important uh, 
uh, highlighted one only here. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, we all know that the NEP 2020, which come after uh, 34 years with an overarching goal of universal access, universal access to high quality education encompassing affordability, accessibility, quality, equity, and accountability uh, to ensure uh, continual learning access, equity, and quality education system. So this is what is the overall focus and the objective of NEP 2020. So in order to uh, acquire and in order to achieve this uh, objective, the, 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 the process, or we should say, uh, the design or the, the, the practice that we are having in our education system need to be uh, uh, holistic and also it needs to be, uh, 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 it needs to take care of some of the most important points which NEP talks about. So well here in the first slide, we can see that uh, holistic education is the soul of national education policy. So if we see the different chapters and if we see the different portion of the uh, NEP 2020, we can see that uh, the main focus or the, the, the binding force we can say uh, is, or the ultimate objective is the holistic education. And this holistic education is also, uh, we can relate it uh, we can relate it to the health and well-being or mental health of the uh, learners. So without holistic education, we cannot talk about mental health or uh, health and well-being. So that is also uh, like if we if we are talking about uh, 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 mental health and well-being, uh, also we need to relate it to holistic education. So whatever uh, the description or whatever chapters, uh, the design that, that is uh, being uh, emphasized in the NEP, is, uh, it's, all, it's about the holistic education. So that is why it is the holistic education is the uh, soul of the National Education Policy 2020. So also we can see that uh, the important uh, uh, vision or the, in, the important efforts of uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat which is also a self-realigned. So we want, uh, we want our country to be economic, economical uh, powerhouse. And, and at the same time, we also uh, need our learners to be you know, imbibed with happiness and ethics, character and morality, uh, which, which has been already discussed uh, in detail. So, in order to achieve, in order to achieve this uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat, we we have to, uh, you know, take care of uh, the important aspects uh, which is uh, given in the NEP, such as uh, the the equity, such as uh, the quality, such as the accessibility, such as uh, you know the uh, th uh, three three degree. Uh, 360 degree, uh, it is written here, 360 degree uh, assessment, uh, which is there. So in order to achieve all those objectives of uh, our education system, we need to focus on what is the most important and what kind of investment. Uh, uh, my uh, previous speaker, the previous speaker has mentioned about uh, the, the demographic dividend. Yes, India has a, uh, 50, uh, almost 50% 50 population of young uh, generation. So we need, we need to invest uh, it right. We need to start early uh, uh, investment into the mental health and well-being of the uh, learners. So that is why NEP, if you look at the NEP, uh, you know, different chapters regarding the, you know, the objective, the introduction part, the ECC part, or the foundational part, the preparatory part, the middle school part, and whatever, you know, that, that is be, being given in, in the different chapter of the NEP uh, 2020, it talks about, uh, it, it relates to this holistic development, holistic de uh, progress of the children, and also it, it, it relates to the mental health. It is um, it, it's talk about the mental well-being of the children. So the focus here, we can see that the focus of any, uh, NEP 2020 is on mental health inclusive progress. And, and we can see that uh, regarding the examination, it talks about the examination, it talks about, uh, you know, the, the school uh, backless, uh, heavy backless days, uh, where the children will be able to have their enjoyment and also they will learn 
uh, you know, with, with um, meaning and related to their daily life. So NEP has talks about uh, also very importantly, it talks about 360 uh, degree uh, uh, assessment or appraisal of the learners, and which is mul uh, multidimensional report. Here, when we talk about uh, this uh, 360 degree multidimensional, we can relate it to uh, how children assessment cannot be only uh, uh, you know, board examination or only uh, you know, paper and pencil test. It has to be from different sources where uh, the children uh, appraisal has to come from, you know, uh, taking cognizance of the uniqueness of the child, the, uh, the, the body, the mind and the spirit which Mahat about. Also, uh, we already heard about how uh, the head, the heart and the hand. These three has to be uh, correlated, and these three uh, 360 degree appear of that the cognitive development, the affective development, and as well as the psychomotor development. So these three is what we we talks about as taking care of the holistic and the comprehensive uh, development of the children. So also is when we talk of this uh, holistic development, what the NEP twenty is on uh, inquiry based uh, learning, if, even the uh, most importantly, rubrics and uh, portfolio and rubric assessment, and the uh, link between the home and the school. So, many a time, what happens is that when children are learning, they dissect what they learn in the class, what they dissect what they learn in the school, and what they learn in the community or in the so uh, is, that is where, uh, you know, the, the problem of linking learning, what they learn in the classroom and what they learn, uh, you know, what they, what they need to use in their daily life. So the, uh, the, the life skill and what they learn in the classroom has to be related. So when we are unable to, you know, assess them in a very holistic and comprehensive manner, then children, uh, you know, we, we are unable to identify the ability, the aptitude and the capability of the learners. So we are not able to nurture the potential attitudes of the learners. So that is, talks about this 360 degree appraisal, progress report appraisal and multidimensional, uh, importantly. Okay, uh, and next slide. So uh, yes, so here when we talk about this um, holistic development and mental uh, mental health and mental well-being, uh, there are three uh, important area. Uh, one is the one is the, um, uh, the 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 mental well-being, and one is the holistic uh, development, and also what the NEP says about. So this this particular session is on these three things. Uh, it is related to this. What the NEP say and what the uh, mental, uh, what is that mental health and what is that holistic development? So do we have to relate to these three things and see to it that practically it is being implemented. We talk of so many things, we say so many things, but when it comes to uh, you know practical, practically implementing, uh, it's very challenging. So, uh, so whatever we, uh, you know. We are um, uh, emphasizing whatever we are talking. Uh, we have to see that whether contextually, whether contextually with the uniqueness of the child, whether it is, uh, you know, possible to be implemented. So when we talk of uh, here um, mental health, we can see that it is about uh, emotional, it is about behavioral, it is about social well-being, which, which is related to the adaptability, which is the related to facing the challenges of uh, the challenges they face daily so so when we when we think of holistic development we have to take care of the psychological aspect we have to take care of the socialization process so when children socialize when children relate with others when children uh, connect with others they also learn to they they also learn you know how to empathize with others how to have you know, uh, listening and how to, you know, uh, care for others, sincerity, accountability, all these are there when we are, uh, you know, practicing this. So, so, so mental health is nowadays uh, already many of the panelists has uh, talked about that regarding how it is so 
uh, you know, uh, challenging uh, after the COVID-19 because the socialization, there was a challenging socializing and also relating and connecting to, you know, the, the larger community. So, so here, that is why, uh, you know, children, uh, we, we, the learning gap, now the learning gap that we, uh, we are facing now has to be reconnected and also see, we have to see to it that, uh, you know, what, what, the, the, what the children needs, what the learners needs and, and emotional. And we have to also remember that children are very diverse. So, so what is the need of my children? What is that? you know, the, the, their background, their cultural background. And also the NEP talks about already what has been already discussed here also that uh, children find, children should find, uh, you know, pride and children should be proud of their uh, root, their cultural, their festivals, you know, their, even their food have their, you know, food, the, the unique food that they have. So many of the indigenous practice that we have, you know, that really help children to relate uh, you know and 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 it nurture the uh, life skill of children many times you know whatever we learn in the classroom doesn't help much in when they are relate when they are coming out in the larger community so the indigenous practice if we can relate it to the uh, our uh, uh, transactional process or the classroom practices it, it really really helps so, so, so that is how we can, you know, you can imbibe, we can uh, bring in the emotional stability, we can uh, see, we can uh, build a positive attitude, and also we can, uh, you know, have a positive uh, social, uh, socio-personal or interpersonal relationship. So this is how we can develop the children mental health. Next slide, please. So, so the, the other aspects uh, is the holistic education. So when we talk about the holistic education, we can see the, uh, you know, it's not only about academic progress. It's not only about how much I score in science, or it's not about only what I score in social science. It's also about healthy social skill. It is character formation. It's about conflict resolution. Nowadays, many children, uh, you know, find very difficult. Many young adults find, or even the adults find very difficult to take decision. This is also a life skill. How do you, you know, uh, how do you take decision in a uh, challenging situation? This is also a skill. Competency, it is a competency. NEP talks about competency. It's not road learning, but it's competency. And the competency has to be, you know, measurable and observable in the children. So we say that, okay, you're you are good in uh, the taking decision. That has to be seen in practice. So how children take decision, how they solve problems, how they face the challenges of life, how they have, you know, they relate to others, how is their attitude towards others, not only others, we, we, we can, also nurture their attitude towards animal and plant and how they relate to their environment. Sometimes like you, you can see how, you know, uh, behavior of children, uh, behavior of a person through how they treat the animals also. So you can, you know, how we have to respect our environment, our surroundings, not only the human, but the, uh, you know, surroundings that we have. So these kind of you know holistic education is the need of the arts so uh, another the other panelist also talks about how now a day when people uh, you know uh, face accident instead of coming and helping of course there are good people no doubt about that i'm not generalizing but generally when people you know face difficulties in, instead of helping you know they take photograph or you know people don't know each other in the neighborhood they're staying nearby each other very very highly educated but they don't know each other they don't know who stay in my next you know who are my community members who needs help in my community so all these things nep talks about human humanness human so a good humans is what is the you know what it talks about ultimately so to bring about a good human being we need to you know think very seriously on how we can practice in you know uh, in the pedagogical process, in the assessment process objective, we have to interrelate it and correlate with the holistic uh, education. Next slide. And uh, I have uh, directly quoted from NEP 2020 that education must move 
towards less content and more towards learning about how to think critically and solve problems. So when we talk of uh, you know critical uh, thinking critically, uh, children will be you know like learners will be uh, testing their knowledge from different perspective. So they'll be understanding, okay, this is how it is. This is what others are thinking. Okay, this is what my experience from yesterday. Okay, this is what happened uh, in the past. So through different, uh, you know, uh, perspective and through different angles, they'll be able to test what they know and that will be helping them to build the competency. And that is why, uh, so when we talk about holistic education and mental well-being, so we need to, we need to see to it that knowledge plus skill plus value plus attitude has to be uh, practiced and also these have to be part and parcel of the uh, you know different uh, approaches of the schools so also nep talks about the 20, 21st century skill creativity collaboration critical thinking communication and life skill these are all very important uh, higher order thinkings uh, which we need to uh, these these cannot be learned without experiential approach. So this has to be learned. This can be learned on, it is, it is hands-on experience and experiential approach of uh, education. So we need to, as much as possible, children have to be given an opportunity to explore, to inquire, to analyze, to think about, to evaluate, to discover. So that is what is important in, uh, in, in our uh, education system today. That is, what, that is why NEP has very strongly emphasized on this 21st century skill, where children will be able to listen to others, will be able to communicate, will be able to convince others, will be able to talk, which is acceptable, and you know, which, which is uh, you know, interpersonal relationship, which will build interpersonal relationship with others. So the, uh, the approaches has to be transformative through experiential learning, through self-learning, through peer learning, and that will, that will help in the connection building. Next slide. So that is why here, what are the important, uh, important recommendation from different uh, important aspects of NEP. I have put it here about the curriculum content how the curriculum content should not be theory loaded. Rather, it should be on the concept, idea, application, and problem solving that help them to learn and also uh, in, you know, to tackle issues that they face uh, in, in life. And also uh, to introduce contemporary uh, uh, subjects such as artificial intelligence, also organic living, 21st century skill, learning to it in an experiential way, incorporating increased flexibility to choose subject also uh, multidisciplinary how children can you know uh, choose subjects of their choice according to their aptitude according to their interest and multiple exit and entry all these things are being emphasized in the nep so that will help in the better learning outcomes so teacher has to have the capability to map up map out the learning outcome so that we can prepare our textbook our curriculum and our lesson plan in the classroom better if we don't have that learning outcomes uh, it's difficult to you know uh, map out what are what is that we are looking for in our education kindly uh, conclude ma'am yes uh, next slide it's almost over yeah next slide please Okay, this is what I have, uh, we can also see in the Nipun Bharat 2021, uh, um, this one, it talks about how competency goals, developmental goals, competency and learning outcomes are related. So when we talk of holistic development, we can see, so it talks of three goals. One is the maintaining uh, good health and well-being. Uh, one is becoming effective communicator. And uh, one is uh, involve learners so these three goals also we can see in the nipun bharat particularly this uh, nipun bharat is uh, implementation of nep particularly for foundational literacy and numeracy so when we talk of holistic education we have to invest very early in the foundational uh, level 
So that is what is also important here to talk about in the holistic development. Next slide. So these are some of the uh, important points which uh, NEP and how it impact, how it has general health. So the focus on pre-primary and multidisciplinary course, which is also, which can be related to the Nipun Bharat 2021 also. So this one, it, if the children, if children start early developing the literacy and numeracy, it will give less stress to them when they come to the higher level. So also is the holistic learning experience, which has been already explained. So learning outcomes and sport integration. So uh, before I end, before I end, I just want to end by saying that. Yeah. Before I end, I just want to add, add that. Uh, I have experience of, uh, you know, sports uh, in my family uh, that um, sport, that we say that sport has to be integrated. Arts and craft can be integrated. But when, when it comes to the reality, uh, it's very difficult to, you know, pursue, uh, pursue you know, academic course together with the sport. So in reality, it is still very challenging. It's still very challenging. So we have to see to it that when we talk of the aptitude, holistic development, we have to see, we have to practice, we have to integrate it the arts and craft as well as the sport, uh, sport education or physical education that the NEP has strongly emphasized. So pedagogical structure, this, this uh, recommendation is, uh, you know, related to how, uh, you know, it will eliminate rigid stream in secondary education and which is related to the career also, career and the job. Okay, next slide. So this will be the last slide. So here, uh, whatever NEP has talked about, the skill base, the vocational learning, this will help in employment. This will help in how children, learners will be choosing their careers. So this is one of the uh, very, more, very, you know, like um, uh, many of the children, adolescents are facing anxiety for which career they will choose. So if this one is emphasized, if this one is practiced, that will take care of that. So what I have already said about multiple exit and common entrance test. Teacher training, this has been already uh, talked by the uh, other panelists also, how teacher mental health has to be, you know, teacher has to be empowered first, teacher has to be trained first, and also the food program. So uh, the better nutrition to start early uh, from the foundational level, then only we can talk at the higher stage about the holistic development. Yeah. So these are some of the important, some of the points which I can uh, see from the, which I can uh, see from the NEP 2020. And I feel that for holistic development, all these, uh, all these uh, points uh, can be once again uh, introspect and uh, once again reflect upon all this point that so that we can incorporate it in our pedagogical uh, approaches as well as in the uh, transactional process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Elizabeth, ma'am. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Mr. Saurabh Jitli, Principal, Kendri Vidyalaya ESC Center, Bangalore. Sir, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, a very pleasant good uh, good evening to one and all present here. Uh, my name is Saurabh Jitli, Principal, KV ASC, uh, Bangalore. Uh, I would like to, um, uh, basically, uh, my previous uh, panelists has covered so many things, Dr. Swati and Dr. Elizabeth has said so many things about that. I would like to start from one thing, that uh, why we are talking about this holistic development, why? Uh, the very first thing which should come to any any mind to any teacher or any educationist, uh, why this is a part of the curriculum, why this activity is being kept in a syllabus. So why we are talking about the holistic development that I want to start. Because I personally believe I may be uh, right or wrong. That um, it depends. Um, the uh, the goal of uh, every activity is to attain happiness and contentedness. If you are happy and atma uh, santusht hai, contented hai, then it is the ultimate goal. We are ready to spend thousands thousands of bucks to watch a movie or to uh, visit a hill station or to any place, not to get sad or not to get depressed, just to be happy. 
so even if you are earning in a six digit or seven digit or eight digit the ultimate aim is to stay happy so a holistically developed people or a student will be more happier i i personally believe that if we have um, uh, incorporated other aspect as dr swati has mentioned that uh, holistic development comprising not only academic but the uh, non academic aspect as well like intellectual mental physical emotional social aesthetic moral so many other things can be in included this in the holistic development so i feel the first um, objective of uh, talking about this holistic development and ensuring holistic development is to make a student happy so being an administration uh, i would prefer that my students and my staff are happy and feeling contented second objective is they should feel confident unless they are confident unless they are ready to believe uh, have believe in their own uh, value uh, they are ready to believe in themselves and uh, that's a, like um, madam elizabeth has also mentioned atmanirbhar bharat and uh, so dr swati has also mentioned um, uh, so many things now uh, when we are saying that we need to value value means you should you should have that whatever you are having that is also correct that is also acceptable what uh, you might have came across that royal families from the uk maharani and all they used to wear cotton which was produced in india and so many you might have came across in 80s when we used to see the ads of namak or neem ke jo they, they were condemning like anything and now they are moving back to those things so first we should instead of putting a question let's find out why this was there and then whether we should value our own system or not and once we have a proof that yes we are correct they may have different perception so but we should value in ourselves so self actualization as um, maslow has also mentioned so the second objective of holistic development according to me is co having confidence and valuing yourself third concept uh, third objective i would like to uh, share with all of you that is um, now everybody is uh, very much busy or very much confined to me mine myself my family my uh, my society my clan my uh, caste wala my and then my um, for a broader aspect uh, my religion or then my town and then more over my state my state to then my uh, part eastern india western india southern part of india and then my country my continent and my world so hardly only few couple of people are thinking about the my world or my country most of them can find me to what i am going to get or my family is going to get if i will do this or that thing so once a student is develop in a holistic way or holistic development is ensured of any student then we can say that gestalt view can be developed in that student that student can think about this uh, about the society about the country and then only he can contribute in a positive manner so i think holistic development according to me is necessary because of three reason one is to make them happy and contented second to have confidence third to have respect for others to have respect for others values beliefs ethics conventions the thing is i may not be right always other fellow can also be right so i must have something uh, in my mind that yes uh, acceptability should be there yes the other fellow can also be right there is nothing complete black and white all everything i believe i personally believe that everything lies uh, is is gray is between black and white nothing is complete uh, wrong or right R true or false because true is um, truthness or or the fact is always having the, the own perspective such ka bhi apna apna version hota hai so according to me holistic development is like that now the second now i have discussed about why now what what comprising of this holistic development um as i have mentioned intellectual mental aesthetic physical social moral so many things so many components are there of holistic development but what i i personally what i want to develop in my students being an administrator first thing i would like to develop that is empathy thinking from others perspective let my student learn how to because that that my previous panelists have discussed very well uh, the effect of the covid period um, uh, in, among the students they are they are not ready to talk to other students they they were confined to the four walls in um, but they were virtually connected to the whole world but they don't want to talk they don't want to physical contact with anybody so they they are feeling that yes whatever is that's mine only 
so they stop uh, they forget how to share the things these resources are common and we should respect each other so empathy empathetic value i want to develop in my student and that will ensure holistic development second how to manage with the emotions now you might have seen the students are having um, very short as uh, dr elizabeth also mentioned they are uh, very short temperament nowadays because they they are not ready to accept the things so i want that my student should learn how to manage emotions and crying is not bad for even males so we are having a taboo if male is crying then it it's not taken as a good thing. but i person second i want that they should learn how to collaborate effectively now you might have seen yeah, today i was uh, reading newspaper that the award was given uh, for nobel is given is shared by three fellows now those were the days when the individual fellow um, was doing any research or innovations or something like now now uh, there is a synergy needed in everything now there is a team is working like uh, being a management student we used to have acronyms together everyone achieve more so now the persons are coming together in order to create synergy so the student should learn how to collaborate effectively then only they can develop something um, uh, effective and uh, and uh, and, uh, and usable and sustainable for the society and the whole world fourth thing i want to develop is the resilience so these four thing uh, i want to develop as a as an administrator um, being a part of holistic development and nep has very beautifully um, uh, shows the way how we can inculcate these value and last i would like to sum up that how uh, uh, what's uh, what's the way forward for me to inculcate or to ensure this holistic development among the students very first thing i i i, I want to share that um, i was going through one of the survey done by manoj darpan in september 2020 only that students of uh, around 50% students are ready to share their problems or issues with the friends and then the parents and then teachers and a very less number of students are ready to take a decision on their own so i think students uh, uh, want, uh, students should have a chance to be listened like uh, all of us are having counselor and other uh, facilitator in our schools those who are um, you know categorically uh, assign the job to listen to the students what are their problems or what they want to say so i think that the student should be listened first so i will make sure that whatever they want to say it should be heard properly or uh, uh, and the one step further they should have say in all uh, all almost all whatever distinct being related to the student or academic or somewhere something related to the school activity at least student should have something to some say in all policy making there should be a suggestion box or they can they can directly communicate with the teacher or to the principal or to the vice principal or any any other reporting uh, fellow because once they will feel like like i i am the part of the decision making process they will feel more confident they will they will start valuing themselves and eventually when they they are part of the decision making process then they have to think from others perspective that's empathy they will start valuing the other fellow as as, as well ki agar non veg sab log layenge so do fellows who are not eating non veg wo lunch mein they it may be a difficult part for the fellow who has never touched uh, non vegetarian food uske sath agar sath wala tiffin non veg khayega to uski smell se he may Uh, not be very comfortable so ye ek values uh, hame develop uh, karne ka ek chance milega second thing uh, jo mai develop karna chahunga uh, that his and her uh, is and her values are respected when students are having say in the um, um, addition making process or any policy or anything then they will start respecting themselves and the once they are respected they will feel confident and then they will start giving respect now what's happening sometime we may find i'm not generalizing everything student used uh, the teacher used to go and start teaching only because there, there hardly any rapport between teachers so students are not comfortable with the um, uh, uh, teachers i personally avoid using that uh, uh, that word bacche hain or children hain in the school as well because the moment we will say ye mera bachcha hai bachcha means 
we are taking authority of a parent when we are taking authority of a parent means that means we want that let child listen to me only now the child is not having to uh, having a right to argue with me so the students are there to learn and how they can learn when they will ask questions when they will have discussion when they they are free to have interaction when they are having free rapport with the student i don't want to say ke bhai isse indiscipline bhi hoga it depends if you are if the teacher is um, uh, confident is having good plan and good command on the content then there is no chance of any indiscipline uh, and last there should be other ways of um, communication as well like nep has mentioned peer assessment and peer learning they have specifically mentioned and proposed it and uh, uh, like peer assessment and peer learning should be promoted nep has uh, said now how to develop this vertical and horizontal uh, vert, or, vertical and horizontal way of communication that any any, any administration has to think upon like are there any uh, specific avenues where the student can discuss can sit can learn is, is there any anything is there any any community is there any club is there anything where the student can meet and interact you might have seen that students some of this not all but some of the students are very uh, eager to uh, meet uh, they are they are not ready to go home they want to uh, stay back at the home after 5 minutes or 10 minutes they want to have chit chat with their close friends and they they want to so there are two kind of groups are always prevailing or, um, organized and unorganized so this informal group is actually helping you a lot in holistic development so i think personally that i i should create or i will create or i am creating as well uh, chances for vertical and uh, and horizontal communication so uh, that's all from my side being an administration i would like that my student should be happy confident uh, having a gestalt view um, reach to that uh, self actualization goals as soon as possible and foremost they should be confident and they should value their own system they should regard indian system of education they should understand what 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 is our assets hum kahan the and we now we are talking about the 20 uh, that our target our honorable prime minister has given target of 25 trillion economy uh, dollars economy so how we have to reach over there how now we are at a fifth place how we have, have to reach to the uh, top one or top two or top three so uh, th this task can be possible when we are ensuring holistic development and the task has to be started from school itself so that's all from my side and thank you so much uh, dr saurabh uh, dr ramesh uh, uh, babu and all the ncrt fellow ri uh, members thank you so much thank you everyone thank you thank you very much uh, saurabh jetri sir now our next panelist is mr mukesh kumar vice principal dps rk puram new delhi sir please mr mukesh kumar sir vice principal dps rk puram new delhi sir are you there in the meeting mr mukesh kumar sir okay we move to our next panelist mr bhavani singh teacher counselor jawahar navodaya vidyalaya mr bhavani singh sir okay uh, good evening to one and all present there uh, am i audible yes sir you are audible yeah uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, the members of ncrt and ri for giving me this unique opportunity to share my views i am here attending this conference as a teacher counselor i am pgt english basically from jawahar navodaya uh, talk about how i am implementing this holistic approach in the value points as suggested by new education policy 2020 first of all uh, my previous speakers for past two days have already shared their valuable uh, views and administrators have also talked about various policies that they are implementing and they have which they have started for the teachers in order to be implemented and imparted for the students so when we talk about holistic uh, the four or five things comes first of all the school so the school should be having a whole school approach and when we say that the school should have a whole school approach it clearly indicates that management should be supportive 
and it should be promotive for not only the emotional and mental well-being of the students but also teachers and all employees then the curriculum and the teachers and the teaching it should promote resilience that is to say ability to bounce back they should teach their students in such a manner that when they face difficulty in their life they should have the potential to bounce back and they should also be able to identify the needs and monitoring the impact of intervention that we are giving from time to time then they should have a very good co uh, collaboration particularly with the parents and the experts and they should have very supportive and appreciative reference but the main thing is that what type of curriculum that we have to implement that is to say the curriculum should be very much inclusive the pedagogy should be holistic competency based teachers should all be first level counselors and assessment as my previous speaker said should be 360 the core of national education policy 2020 and also this is what is to be imparted as a counseling and guidance services in our school so first of all i would like to just uh, just to talk about that are all these things or facilities available in our schools the policies and the things which we all are talking about for past two days because i am working as a teacher and i am also working as a counselor and the answer is a big yes certainly first of all when yesterday dr shishmita ma'am was talking about that in a school so let me first of all tell you that for past 10 years there is a drastic change in uh, the policy adopted by not only kvs or nvs and other when in 2012 i had done my diploma course at that time there wasn't any counselor in my school and i was the sole teacher counselor and today let me tell you we have 24 teachers and out of those 24 teachers 21 teachers are trained one in form of we have two regular counselors two teacher counselors trained by ncert and ri five teachers have been uh, trained by sel unesco project that is social emotional learning they are working as facilitators three teachers are trained as aep program coordinators five teachers are awakening citizen program and five teachers are the part of value education trained teachers from ncert what i wanted to show is uh, main focus is that we have a very good pool of teachers who have the first hand knowledge of how to give counseling particularly for the well being of our students the only thing uh, so far as when we are planning the action plan to impart counseling services is that we will have to take the uh, services of all these teachers in a very effective manner now comes the question second one that what are the problems or the issues that uh, we generally face in our daily initial setup so uh, there is a letter from uh, uh, there is a letter from nvs and also it is uh, on the manodarpan site uh, it was uh, posted on 6th of september 2020 and it's a wonderful uh, letter that indicates that there are certain stresses stressors dealing with the developmental issues Bhavani, which are to be observed uh, Bhavani, sir uh, kindly conclude sir, sir. we have a very short time please. okay okay uh, so i just wanted to uh, just say that we will have to implement all the letters uh, given from nvs or from headquarter in letter and spirit and we have also have to design one curriculum that should not only talk about the content but should talk, talk about the value aspect and we have already designed that as a, a language teacher i have designed with the help of my other teachers and we conduct similar workshops for other teachers thank you very much mr bhavani singh sir from jawahar navodaya vidyalaya now i would like to invite our next panelist ms harvinder saraswat counselor sri venkateswar international school delhi please ma'am uh, namaskar to all am i audible yes ma'am you are audible uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to such an august uh, gathering and uh, it's been great experience listening to all i'm sure we all know what nep is all about what all it's talking about we've been enlightened enough what i'll focus on as a practitioner is on the practical aspects how do we really go about it 
and you know we've got this beautiful framework of education policy after 36 years but if it does not get translated in real terms the purpose gets lost so that is very very important and i think we should have a proper standardized format which schools can you know uh, alter a bit to their own requirements but something which is more standardized and which is you know uh, which talks about quality control which talks about implementation of all the aspects so let's go straight away i'll keep it short and if i'm going wrong just let me know and i'll cut it short there itself so first thing set up a mental health advisory board in the schools which should compromise not only of the administrators the counselors, special educators, but teachers, students, very important, peer educators, they are a big, big, uh, you know, support system to us. And they percolate the information and the services to all the children. So peer educators, and I would suggest invite your alumni, the students who have passed out from the school, they should be part of this committee. Because if we want this to be a holistic perspective, as everybody's been talking about, if we want this to be a long term thing, if we want this to be translated to the societal level, everybody needs to be part of this. Now, what does this advisory board do? Resilience, anything. So we need to have ways, have workshops, we need to have brainstorming sessions, wherein each uh, department sits takes uh, hold of the mental health curriculum and tells us, okay, how do I impart it in my classroom? How do I impart it my, in, uh, you know, in, incorporate it in my curriculum? That's very, very important. Only then we will see it happening. Next, a uh, very important aspect, which already uh, some boards have already started. Uh, others I'm sure will follow soon, teacher training. Mental health cannot be one person's or two person's or three person's prerogative and, you know, charting it out to the kids, no. It has to be a holistic, uh, combined collective effort from everybody. So every teacher needs to be trained and not trained only once, but a continuous training every year. Like in our school, we train teachers almost three to four times every year. And then new staff gets trained every year because we grow, right? And as Dr. Patra very rightly said, it is not the mental health of the students only mental health collectively of the society teachers teachers included administrators included all our staff included so that needs to be taken care of now um we've been talking about you know we'll take care of the uh, uh issues that the children have my point is let's talk about positive health also let's incorporate it as a integral part of our curriculum let's uh, you know put in gratitude exercises let's put in meditation these are all positive health uh, practices which you know uh, they help you in handling the issues if they come over and they enhance your personality also your self growth also so why should we wait for something to happen and then take action let's make them part of our curriculum right from the beginning as dr patra very rightly uh, had pointed out daily government is already doing it in happy classroom uh, curriculum but then why should it call, be called something different it should be part of all subjects and everything we should be incorporating those activities on a daily basis that is something that i would want uh, to be done the other thing that i uh, very strongly feel is that we need to have uh, inclusive practices room for diversity and celebration of diversity how do we do that one screening of every child which has started just started coming in in the form of precious which is uh, the teachers are being trained for that the other thing is every human being every child has something special let's celebrate that so focus on what the positives are and we need to have very very concrete activities how to do that and identify children in various things one of the activities that we can think of is identify the learning styles of the children and try your curriculum to be you know focused on every kind of uh, learning style not only reading writing that we all do right that is what is going to make this education policy different and change the education scenario um the other uh, thing that yeah do i need to wind up kindly uh, kindly conclude uh, just two more points i think um one is sports i would want uh, you know i would suggest and uh, very strongly say that it needs to be part of daily curriculum sports and arts that's very important then uh, vocational training why do why should we wait for vocational training to start happening somewhere in sixth and eighth standard it should be part of you know uh, right from the very beginning also we need to inculcate degree uh, you know dignity for labor 
in our children. So collaborating with the artisans, people around, uh, respecting them, I think that needs to be uh, something that we need to integrate. Um, I have a few more points, but then I think I have covered all. Uh, and uh, keeping the time into uh, you know account, I would end my talk here. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Ms. Parvinda yeah. Saraswati. Uh, uh, now I would like to invite uh, Ms. Chandana Mandalna to uh, conclude the session. Uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to apologize. I'm having huge connectivity issues. I apologize to everyone. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I missed uh, some parts of these sessions, but largely I was here. And the topic has been, I think, dealt very well. Uh, the participants are the better judge of that but uh, to conclude i would like to emphasize uh, that whole school approach matters and as a principal one of the principal has addressed from bangalore he had talked about uh, that that uh, if we allow the students to express themselves that's one very big uh, thing uh, student need uh, expression avenues to express themselves and the practical uh, approach would be, he only mentioned that they establishing the clubs, uh, as many clubs as possible and involving them uh, in uh, all the uh, decision making uh, activities that directly uh, affect the students. Uh, they, this can be definitely done. Uh, uh, we often don't believe, uh, we don't trust that they can They can be very well made a part of it. For example, in KV, we have this practice that in library committee, students um, are part of uh, that committee and uh, they can suggest uh, the purchase of some books. So similarly, uh, uh, regarding exam dates, they, they should be involved, they should be heard, if not agreed upon everything, but they should be heard. That is uh, one very big thing. And uh, of course, there are many practical approaches, like just now the previous speaker was saying that collaborative learning is another thing. And for that, there are many group projects is one thing, uh, then uh, any function, let them be the uh, uh, students, let them organize uh, any fair, fate, etc. Let them be the organizers. Of course, teachers will be there to guide them. So such activities need to be given, which can be very well in, integrated with the curriculum. So that would be the, the whole idea is that is the mental health and the holistic development. They need to be understood in an integrated manner and the whole, uh, whole school approach. If the uh, school is geared towards school, understands this and geared towards it, then we will need, uh, we will not be uh, in a, uh, it, it, it may not be required that every time we deal this mental health as a separate scenario unless there is some really uh, big uh, issue with some particular specific case. Because certain, as I was saying earlier when I got disconnected, that certain uh, issues are there which uh, uh, adults in face and these uh, whole school approach can very well take care of that. So before the uh, it becomes a mental health issue, it can be addressed. So, and like uh, everybody said, the sports and games every day. It's not that once in a while we are organizing something. Every day that games period, children ask them and they will ask for a games period. So they need that uh, energy to be let out. And sports and games are a big uh, uh, avenue where team building and that communication uh, leadership quality, sports and games are a big, big thing, uh, as the previous speaker was saying. And also, uh, um, it has been observed that uh, 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 meditation, some sort of, call it whatever, just uh, silence to, uh, for five minutes, uh, some sort of meditation practice will also help the children in focusing. Um, so, uh, I would like to conclude with this. Uh, and thank you uh, to the NCRT for organizing this and talking about it. Uh, this is the big major step when the principals are here from different school systems. This is a major step that is uh, generate, talking about it and generating awareness. Uh, a big thank you to NCRT and all the Manodarpan cell and uh, the PSS CIV who has uh, taken all the uh, measures. Thank you. Dr. Saurabh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. 
and really this was a wonderful session and uh, how we will implement this national education 2020 for mental health and well being really now after this session we can uh, make a framework so i would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the panelists professor swati patra ma'am dr elizabeth ma'am uh, mr saurabh jetli sir mr mukesh kumar sir uh, mr bhavani singh and ms harvinder saraswat ma'am thank you thank you to all of you now we just start our concluding session we started our journey yesterday at uh, 10 am and now we have reached this is the time uh, 5 uh, 15 approximately 5 15 is the time and i just want to quote uh, the words which our uh, director sir professor dinesh prasad saklani sir used wo kehte hain ki sainikon ke jeevan mein padhav aate hain manzil nahi aati तो अभी ये हमारी मंजिल नहीं है इसीलिए हमने इसको वैलिडिक्टी सेशन नाम नहीं दिया है ये एक पड़ाव है जिस पड़ाव पर आज हम पहुंचते हैं इसीलिए जो हमने इन दो दिन में किया है आज हम वहां तक उस पड़ाव तक हमने क्या किया है और आगे हमें किस पड़ाव तक जाना है उस पड़ाव तक जाने की तैयारी अब हम इस सत्र में करेंगे तो इस सत्र में जिसको हमने कंक्लूडिंग सेशन कहा है उसमें एक बार फिर से आप सभी का हार्दिक स्वागत है मैं स्वागत करता हूं हमारे सभी स्कूल के प्रिंसिपल्स का सभी वाइस प्रिंसिपल्स का हमारे टीचर काउंसलर्स का काउंसलर्स का जो इस सेमिनार में हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं और साथ ही साथ इस सेशन में हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं हमारे डॉक्टर राजीव रंजन जी ही इज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन आर आई अजमेर वो हमारे साथ हैं और लास्ट में इस सत्र के अंत में जो हमारा सत्र का जो जिसे हम कहें निष्कर्ष निकलेगा निचोड़ निकलेगा उसमें वो हमारे साथ रहेंगे हमारे साथ हैं हमारे ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी के सभी सदस्य हमारे साथ हैं डॉक्टर सुष्मिता चक्रवर्ती मैम डॉक्टर रुचि शुक्ला मैम डॉक्टर प्राची मैम डॉक्टर एलिजाबेथ मैम आप सभी का भी इस सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है और हमारे पास समय बहुत कम है इसीलिए हमारे साथ में जो लगभग 50 से 60 जो ऑफलाइन हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स थे जो यहाँ पर भोपाल के हमारे आसपास के नवोदय विद्यालय केंद्रीय विद्यालय के हमारे प्राचार्य हमारे टीचर काउंसलर्स काउंसलर हमारे स्टूडेंट्स उन सभी का भी मैं स्वागत करता हूं और उनमें से कुछ हमारे जो प्रिंसिपल्स हैं टीचर काउंसलर्स हैं मैं उनके विचार जानना चाहूंगा कि आगे हमारा दो दिन का ये जो सत्र रहा है इसको हम आगे कैसे लेके जाएंगे यहां से जिस तरह हमारा जो इनिशियल जो हमारा इनॉग्रल सेशन था उसमें जो मैडम चांग सांग ने जो हमारे सामने एक फ्रेमवर्क बनाने की बात रखी थी वो फ्रेमवर्क कैसा होगा उसे हमारे अलग अलग चाहे हमारे नवोदय विद्यालय समिति हो चाहे केंद्रीय विद्यालय हो या हमारे ट्राइबल स्कूल से भी हमारे पास महाराष्ट्र में वहां के भी प्रिंसिपल हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं तो इन सभी अलग अलग प्रकार के जो हमारे स्कूल्स हैं हमारे जो प्राइवेट स्कूल्स हैं उनमें अब किस तरह से हमें मेंटल हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस प्रोग्राम को इंप्लीमेंट करना है इसके बारे में हम चर्चा को प्रारंभ करते हैं और सबसे पहले मैं आमंत्रित करता हूं हमारे बीच में डॉक्टर राजेश शर्मा जी हैं सरदार पटेल पब्लिक स्कूल भोपाल से आप काउंसलर भी हैं मनु दर्पण हमारी जो हेल्पलाइन है उससे भी जुड़े हुए हैं मैं आपको आमंत्रित करता हूं कि संक्षिप्त में जो हमारा जो फ्रेमवर्क है हमें आगे कैसे बढ़ना है उसके बारे में आपने बात है डॉक्टर राजेश शर्मा जी Good evening, everyone, and I must congratulate RI and NCERT for conducting such a fantastic Adi, conference. The conference has been for two days, and I can tell a lot of take homes. First of all, it provided the concept for holistic development of the child, and that is what when we talk of education is most important. Then, it, how and why we must implement mental health in the school level? Or, I want to say that the value of mental health implementation value education is not just for education. It has to be part of syllabus, everyday activity, and every subject has to be such activity. Honi जिससे कि बच्चे की मेंटल हेल्थ इंप्रूव कर सके हम एनईपी की बात करते रहे 21st सेंचुरी के 5 सीज स्किल्स की बात कर रहे हैं और उन सब को हम तभी अचीव कर सकते हैं जब मेंटल हेल्थ अच्छी रहेगी और इस पूरी कॉन्फ्रेंस में जो बात मैंने समझी 
होल स्कूल अप्रोच सबसे ज्यादा कामयाब रहने वाली है मोस्ट यूजफुल राइट फ्रॉम पियोन टू ड्राइवर टू टीचर्स टू द स्टूडेंट पेरेंट एंड होल कम्युनिटी एवरीबडी और जैसा की आपने कहा कि ये जो हमारा मेंटल हेल्थ और बैलेंस का प्रोग्राम है ये अक्रॉस का करिकुलम ये हमारे जितने भी एक्टिविटीज हैं हमारे जो भी सब्जेक्ट्स हैं हमारे उन सभी के अंतर्गत इसको जाना चाहिए तो थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर सुनीता सिंह मैम मैम इज फ्रॉम जवाहर विद्यालय समिति प्लीज सभी से मैं आग्रह करूंगा कि अपने आप को म्यूट कर लीजिए प्लीज थैंक यू वेरी मच सर for giving me opportunity to express my views from this big platform good evening to all honorable dignitaries of uh, this national conference program all resource persons speakers tutor mentors and participants of online offline learning mode uh, we are uh, listening from two days of yeah, mental yeah. well-being so uh, i have collected some lines yeah. on mental yeah. health mental health is not a destination but a process it's about how you drive not where you are going aap isko process mein kaise layenge chalna driving और चलना ये दोनों ही चीजें अलग अलग है तो चलना हमारा रास्ता तो सामने दिख रहा है लेकिन हम उसको कैसे ड्राइव करके जा रहे हैं वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है तो हमने जो ये दो दिन में देखा इस कॉन्फ्रेंस के अंदर किसी ने हॉलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट कहा किसी ने टीम वर्क पे बात की किसी ने स्किल डेवलपमेंट की बात की बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जिसको ये पांच मिनट में या दो मिनट में कंक्लूड करना संभव नहीं है ये बहुत बड़ा प्रोग्राम है इसको कम से कम दस बार देखना चाहिए मेरे ख्याल से और जब हम देखेंगे तब हम एक एक चीज को इम्प्लीमेंट कर पाएंगे तो एज ए नवोदय विद्यालय हमने ये चीज बैठे बैठे ये चीज एक फ्रेम जैसा बनाया कि अगर हम इसको इम्प्लीमेंट करना चाहेंगे तो कैसे करेंगे ऑलरेडी इम्प्लीमेंटेड है हम लोगों का एक पी ए पी बना हुआ है वर्क कर रहे हैं पर बहुत सारी चीजें ऐसी हैं जो हमको करने की जरूरत है uh, मान लीजिए एज अ प्रिंसिपल सॉरी मैं पीजीटी uh, हूँ मैं सजेशन देने के उसमें हूँ तो ये है क्योंकि बड़े लोगों के लिए मैं सजेशन नहीं दे सकती पर इफ आई विल प्रिंसिपल मैं अगर प्रिंसिपल होंगी तो मैं क्या कर नवोदय के लिए अपने जो विद्यालय है एज अ प्रिंसिपल मैं सबसे पहले उनका एक गुड लिस्नर बनूंगी और क्या करूंगी मैं पी टू पी प्योर से लेके खुद प्रिंसिपल तक को सुनूंगी खुद को भी सुनना है लोगों को सुनना है ज्यादातर क्या होता है कि बहुत सारे लोग कहते हैं बोलते हैं कि नहीं किसी को सुनना नहीं है नहीं सुनिए आप रिएक्ट मत कीजिए सोचिए फिर उसके बाद आप सोचिए कहीं ऐसा तो नहीं वो एक कोई ऐसी चीज लेके आया जिसको आप सुनने से वंचित रह गए तो मुझे लगता है ये गुड लिसनर बनने की जरूरत है और ये मेरा पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस है कई बार ऐसा हो जाता है कि हम सुन नहीं पाते हैं दूसरों को दूसरा एक टीम वर्क की बात कही सब लोगों ने तो टीम जो है हमारी बहुत ही पावरफुल होनी चाहिए टीम कैसी होनी चाहिए कि एक अम्ब्रेला के जैसे अम्ब्रेला जैसे कैसा होता है छतरी है अगर आप प्रिंसिपल हैं तो आप सबके लिए एक प्रोटेक्शन प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं क्योंकि 
स्कूल आपको देख रहा है आपके आदेश को देख रहा है हर कोई आपके हुक्म का ये कर रहा है परवाह कर रहा है तो इसलिए आपके इमोशंस का ख्याल सब रख रहे हैं तो आपको भी उनके इमोशंस का ख्याल रखना पड़ेगा चाहे वो प्यून हो टीचर हो बच्चा हो पेरेंट्स हो या कोई भी हो तो हम ये एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि एक मेंटल जो हेल्थ वेलबींग की बात हो रही है तो ये बहुत कंफर्ट जोन क्रिएट करेगा दूसरा है कि हम जो हमारा जो बिहेवियर है एज अ प्रिंसिपल एक फ्रेंडली एनवायरनमेंट क्रिएट करें कोई भी आए तो आपसे बेहिचक बात करें बेहिचक अपने मन के भावों को एक्सप्रेस कर सके ताकि उसको ऐसा ना हो कि एक डिस्टेंस मेंटेन किया कि ये बॉस है हम एम्प्लॉय हैं तो हमारे बीच ऐसा रिलेशन नहीं रहना चाहिए और दूसरा एज ए टीचर अगर मैं ये बात कहूं कि एज ए टीचर तो हमें एज ए टीचर अपने सब्जेक्ट पे कमांड रखना चाहिए और दूसरा क्या है जो एक बच्चों से जो बाउंडिंग होनी चाहिए हमारी बहुत अच्छी होनी चाहिए दूसरा मैं ये बात कह रही कि काउंसलर काउंसलर लोगों से अक्सर मैंने सुना है कि बोलते हैं कि प्रिंसिपल लोग ये नहीं करने देते ऐसा नहीं है प्रिंसिपल मानते हैं बात को अगर हम काउंसलर हो के अगर हम अपने प्रिंसिपल को नहीं कन्विंस कर पाए नहीं बता पाए तो ये हमारी असफलता है तो सबसे पहले हमें उनको कॉन्फिडेंस में लेना है एक टीम तैयार करनी है और उस टीम में टीचर्स के अंदर जो इंफीरियोरिटी होती है कि काउंसलर्स के पास बच्चे सारे चले जाएंगे वो चीज खत्म हो जाएगा और एक टीम जब बन जाएगी और एक रिलेशन मेंटेन हो जाएगा तो हर कोई फुल मूड से काम करने के लिए तैयार हो जाएगा तो ठीक है मैं एक लाइन बोलना चाहूंगा सर एक अगर एक भी व्यक्ति लाइट ऑन कर दे तो कहते हैं ना अंधेरा भी खत्म हो जाता है तो हैप्पीनेस कैन बी फाउंड इवन इन द डार्कनेस डार्केस्ट ऑफ टाइम इफ वन वनली रिमेंबर टू टर्न ऑन द लाइट थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू एनसीआर टीम आर आई भोपाल मनोज अर्पण और सभी पैनलिस्ट सभी लोगों ने सुना और स्पेशल थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर सौरभ सिंह जिन्होंने हम सबको अपॉर्चुनिटी दी इतने बड़े प्लेटफॉर्म से बात करने के लिए एक्सप्रेस करने के लिए थैंक यू सर डॉक्टर सुनीता सिंह मैम और मुझे पता है कि जितने भी हमारे सभी हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स हमारे सभी प्रिंसिपल दो दिन में हमने इतना सुना है कि अब हमें थोड़ी सुनाने की भी हमारे सबके अंदर उत्सुकता है कि हम भी अपने विचारों का आदान प्रदान करें लेकिन हमने सभी को यहाँ पर समय दे पाना बड़ा मुश्किल है लेकिन हमारा जो टेलीग्राम ग्रुप बना है इसीलिए हमने उसको बनाया है कि उसको एज ए रिसोर्स ग्रुप हम यूज करेंगे हम अपने विचारों को अपनी भावनाओं को अपने सुझावों को हम उस टेलीग्राम ग्रुप के माध्यम से हम प्रेषित करते रहेंगे अगले इसी क्रम में मैं आमंत्रित करता हूं डॉक्टर रजनीश पांडे जी को केंद्रीय विद्यालय रीवा से और संक्षिप्त में दो मिनट के अंदर आप अपने विचार रखें प्लीज थैंक यू सर दो दिन की कॉन्फ्रेंस के बाद हम सब अपने अपनी जगहों पर जाएंगे 2020 से मैं टीचर काउंसलर भी काम कर रहा हूं और मुझे जो सबसे जरूरी बात लगती है वो ये कि मेंटल हेल्थ की अवेयरनेस क्लासेस में हो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन हमारा सपोर्ट नहीं करते हैं कोई बात नहीं दे आर सो मेनी वर्क्स नंबर ऑफ सर्कुलर आर कमिंग पर डे टीचर्स आर एंगेज प्रिंसिपल आर एंगेज इन फुलफिलिंग द प्रोफार्माज बट वी टीचर्स हेल्प द स्टूडेंट्स बाई अवेयरिंग दम अबाउट द मेंटल इलनेस we can identify the students by seeing their observation aap sab manenge pehle main bhi ek strict teacher tha aur jab se ye dcgc ka course kiya uske baad ek perspective hi change ho gaya aisa lagta hai apne hi bacche hain kuch galti bhi karte hain to apna bachpana yaad aa jata hai ki apne bachpan mein humne bhi to ye galtiyan ki thi agar ek baar hum kisi bacche ke peet mein haath rakh dete hain एक शरारती बच्चा भी होता है वो हमारी बात सुनने लगता है इवन वो पढ़ने भी लगता है एक समय था ये कहा जाता था कि एक हेल्दी बॉडी में हेल्दी माइंड रहता है हेल्दी माइंड डेवलप्स हेल्दी हेल्दी बॉडी डेवलप्स हेल्दी माइंड इसको 
रिवर्ट करने की आवश्यकता है एक हेल्दी माइंड ब्रीड्स अ हेल्दी बॉडी क्योंकि हम सब जानते हैं पर एक नर्वस सिस्टम है ब्रेन ही सब कुछ करता है अगर ब्रेन पॉजिटिव रहेगा पॉजिटिव थॉट्स होंगे पॉजिटिव थॉट सोचेंगे तो हमारे अच्छे हारमोन्स रिलीज होंगे बच्चा पढ़ेगा भी आगे भी बढ़ेगा और हमारी इज्जत भी करेगा तो जरूरत ये है कि सारी टीचर फैटेंटी को कम से कम एक वीक की ट्रेनिंग करा देनी चाहिए और साथ में एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को भी प्रिंसिपल्स को भी अगर वो समझेंगे इस जरूरत को तो जरूर हमारी हेल्प करेंगे धन्यवाद इसी क्रम में मैं आमंत्रित करता हूँ मिस्टर हरीश बारिया वो मध्य प्रदेश के सेकेंडरी स्कूल में टीचर काउंसलर है मिस्टर हरीश बारिया जी और इसके बाद डॉक्टर अशोक बचाव जी जो आश्रम स्कूल में टीचर काउंस प्रिंसिपल है और काउंसलर भी हैं आश्रम स्कूल महाराष्ट्र से जो आए हैं मैं आपको आमंत्रित सभी दो दिनों से हम इस कार्यशाला में बंधन में थे कि मानसिक स्वास्थ्य कैसे किया जाए क्या क्या अवधारणाएं हैं और जो हम एनईपी की बात करते हैं बीस बीस की उसमें यह स्पष्ट उल्लेख है कि मानसिक स्वास्थ्य एक महत्वपूर्ण धरातल है सभी बच्चों के ज्ञानात्मक विकास के आधार पर दो दिनों में हम कार्यशाला में बहुत सारी चीजें सीखने को मिली जो हम मुझे लगता है कि हमें वर्तमान परिपेक्ष में तीन धरातल पर काम करने की आवश्यकता है पहला है हमारे शिक्षकों के बीच जो नैसर्गिक रूप से काउंसिलर होते हैं और कई वक्ताओं ने भी कहा कि 10 परसेंट नैसर्गिक गुण काउंसलिंग का उनमें होता ही है परामर्श दाता होते ही हैं पर जैसे मेरे आदरी डॉक्टर साहब ने कहा कि रंजीत जी ने कि सभी को एक दिन की ट्रेनिंग कराई जाए बिल्कुल इसके लिए मैं सहमत हूं कि हर शिक्षक को नितान्त आवश्यक है कि एक काउंसलिंग का बेसिक फ्रेमवर्क डेवलप किया जाए ताकि हर संस्था में वो शिक्षक बेसिक काउंसलिंग के गुणों से परिपूर्ण हो ताकि अपने बच्चों को समझे उनमें एम्पेथी डेवलप हो वो बच्चों को अपना समझे दूसरा है बच्चों के बीच में जब बच्चे नितान्त आपके साथ जुड़ेंगे तो निश्चित वो आपको अपनी भावना को व्यक्त कर सकेंगे भावना को व्यक्त करने के लिए जरूरी है कि उन्हें अपना बनाना है तो दूसरा काम है बच्चों के बीच में हमें उनको अपनी अभिव्यक्ति को स्वतंत्रता से व्यक्त करने का अवसर देना तीसरा है कम्युनिटी में जाना जो समुदाय है जो पालक है उनके बीच में भी हमें इसको लेके जाना पड़ेगा मानसिक स्वास्थ्य उनको भी एक जागरूकता अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करनी होगी ताकि वो समझे कि अगर उसमें किसी बच्चे में मानसिक स्वास्थ्य का कोई विकार है तो प्रारंभिक दौर में ही उसको हम परिलक्षित कर पाए तो तीन चरणों में हमें काम करना है शिक्षकों के बीच बच्चों के बीच में और तीसरा पालकों के साथ इतना ही मैं कहना चाहूंगा और मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा आरिफ भोपाल को कि यह अवसर मुझे प्रदान किया थैंक यू जय हिंद अब मैं आमंत्रित करता हूं श्री मच्छिंद्र जादव जी जो आश्रम स्कूल महाराष्ट्र से हमारे बीच में है जादव जी प्रिंसिपल थैंक यू डॉक्टर सौरभ सर इट इज अ ग्रेट ऑनर टू बी हियर एंड दिस हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ टू पर्सन डॉक्टर अशोक बच्चा एंड डॉक्टर सौरभ सर हमने कल पिछले दो दिनों से बहुत सीखा है मैं वो आप सभी जानते हैं क्या क्या है आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर अ स्टोरी बिफोर यू आई विल फिनिश इट इन टू मिनिट्स एक स्पैरो था और जंगल में आग लगी थी जंगल में आग लगी थी सभी बर्ड्स सभी एनिमल्स इधर उधर भाग रहे थे और वो जो स्पैरो था वो अपने बीक में बाजू के लेक से पानी लेके वो फायर बुझा रहा था वो फायर बुझाने की कोशिश कर रहा था और वहीं पे एक कौवा बैठा था और वो उसने पूछा कि हाउ कैन यू पुट आउट ऑल द फायर ये सब आप, आप कैसे बुझाओगे इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल एट दैट टाइम द रिप्लाई of that bird that little sparrow was that i know i know it very well that i cannot put out that fire to be written of the doers of the positive attitudes 
in the same way we have to take positive attitude from this conference and we have to work out on our in our schools that positive mental attitude of ourselves is very important dr uh, saurabh said said that just when we take uh, when we become ill we go to physician the same way we need to go to the mentalist or the positive attitude persons uh, to develop our me mental attitude mental health and thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity thank you thank you very much aur fir main ek baar aap sabhi se kshama prarthi hu ki main sabhi ko yahan bolne ke liye aamantrit nahi kar sakta hu agar hame fir se ek baar jab kabhi mauka milega to fir se hum ek baar vichar saaja karenge otherwise ye jo hamara technical jo platform hamare sath hai jisme hame ab aap sab logon se is conference mein mujhe nahi lagta ki koi aisa pradesh hoga jahan se hamare beech mein wahan ke prachary teacher counselor ya counselor hamare sath nahi jude ho to ye sab is technique ki wajah se hai aur usi se hum hamesha ek dusre ke sath jude rahenge ab main aamantrit karta hu hamare sath hi dr rajiv ranjan ji ko जो अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ा एक मोटिवेशन है वो लगातार आ, हमारे मनोदर्पण के जो हमारे सहयोग और परिचर्चा कार्यक्रमों को संचालित करते हैं स्पेशल एजुकेटर है और लगातार हमारे जो आ, इस तरह के हेल्थ और वेलनेस से रिलेटेड इसमें कॉपरेट करते हैं जी राजीव रंजन जी प्लीज डॉक्टर राजीव रंजन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर सर सुन पा रहे हाँ आपकी आवाज आ रही है आपका फोटो नहीं आ रहा सर सौरभ जी नमस्कार हम डॉक्टर शुक्ला डेपी एनसीआरटी से हाँ हम लोग राजीव रंजन जी एक बार बोलेंगे उसके बाद फिर हम लोगों को डेलिबरेशन करने हैं ये एस्टीम्ड ग्रुप जो हमारे साथ जुड़ा हुआ है पिछले दो दिन से हम उनकी सहायता लेना चाहते हैं जैसा कि सेक्रेटरी मैडम ने कल सुबह अपने वो गेस्ट चीफ गेस्ट रिमार्क्स में बोला था कि एक कॉमन मिनिमम प्रोग्राम एक फ्रेमवर्क जैसा कुछ इस कॉन्फ्रेंस से निकल के आए जो आगे और जो लोग जुड़ नहीं पाए उनको भी मदद करें मेंटल हेल्थ की इस मुहिम को आगे ले जाने के लिए तो कृपया उसके लिए थोड़ा टाइम रखिएगा एंड आई वॉन्ट टू रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड पीपल प्रेजेंट एट भोपाल to please bear with us and stay for another 45 minutes so that we can get something really concrete for people who have not had the opportunity to join this conference thank you hello doctor sir हाँ राजीव जी आजी सुन पा रहे हैं हाँ जी मैं सुन पा रहा हूँ हाँ आप सुन पा रहे हैं हेलो हेलो हाँ जी सर सुन पा रहे हैं सुन पा रहे हैं आप प्लीज बोलिए हाँ आवाज आ रही है आपकी सर लेकिन आपका विजिबिलिटी नहीं है इसलिए मैं बाहर बोलिए राजीव जी अपना वीडियो ऑफ कर दीजिए और फिर ट्राई कीजिए तो ऑडियो भी बेटर आएगा हाँ थैंक यू सो मच मैम हाँ आपकी ऑडियो क्वालिटी हैज इम्प्रूव ड्रास्टिकली बोलिए हम लोग सब सुन पा रहे हैं नहीं नहीं लास्ट में चूंकि इनवाइट किया उन्होंने कंक्लूड करने के लिए के एरिया में बस भी बोलना चाहूंगा की बहुत कुछ है अवेयरनेस और प्रिवेंशन को लेके Yes, बहुत चीजें हैं बट उसमें एक चीज जो अभी एक मैम बोल रही थी जेएनबी से मैं भी जेएनबी का स्टूडेंट हूँ तो मुझे भी यही लगता है कि पहले हम सुनना सीखें कई बार हमारे पास वक्त नहीं होता है टाइम नहीं होता है बच्चों को सुनने के लिए वो एक बहुत बड़ी मुसीबत होती है कि 
कुछ एस्पेक्ट को हम नहीं देख पाते हैं और खास करके इमोशनल एस्पेक्ट को हम नहीं देख पाते हैं तो इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस जो है वो हमारा बहुत जरूरी है बढ़ाना वो हमारे बॉडी लैंग्वेज बच्चों का समझना बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि 90 परसेंट जो है वो तो नॉन वर्बल एक्सप्रेशन से ही एक रिफ्लेक्ट होते हैं सिर्फ 10 परसेंट स्पीच होते हैं और जब बच्चों की बात आती है उस समय तो ये परसेंटेज और भी कम जाता है क्योंकि तो बच्चे नहीं कर पाते तो इसलिए अवेयरनेस के लिए और सिचुएशन को प्रिवेंट करने के लिए ये बहुत जरूरी है और इंटरवेंशन पे तो हम जाए बट बहुत ज्यादा इंटरवेंशन के लिए पहले नहीं सोचे पहले हम मेंटल हेल्थ को लेके चीजों को समझे बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो लोगों को पता नहीं है कि इस तरह की भी प्रॉब्लम्स होती है इमोशनल एस्पेक्ट्स को लेके तो लास्ट में मैं ज्यादा नहीं बोलना चाहूंगा ठीक है बस थैंक यू सो मच पूरी टीम को एनसीआर टीम को और सौरभ जी को थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच सौरभ जी सौरभ सर ओवर टू यू हेलो सौरभ जी एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैडम थैंक यू किरण मैम वेरी गुड इवनिंग आप कैसी हैं गुड इवनिंग टू यू फाइन फाइन आई द कॉन्फ्रेंस 